Hello, everyone, and welcome to number 15 in the series of 20 demonstrations, conversations, and sales of Native American pottery here at Andrea Fisher Fine Pottery. I'm Andrea Fisher, and today we are lucky enough to welcome Sammy Naranjo and Melanie Gutierrez. But before I introduce them to you, I would just like to say a few words about well, what's happening here in the gallery and in Santa Fe and a few things about the other videos that we've done. This is number 15 out of 20. And the reason that we're doing these videos, these long in-depth videos, is for you, uh, our customers, our future customers, and the whole rest of the world out there, uh, to get an idea about how involved and how long it takes to make Native American pottery, how intricate it is, how traditional it is, and how much it is part of a family life. The other 14 videos that we have are now up, up online at YouTube in our channel. And if you go to www.youtube.com and click on or search for Andrea Fisher Fine Pottery, all of the videos will come up. So if you get interrupted today and want to see it in its entirety, that uh, we will, uh, it will be online, but this particular vi video will be posted, oh, maybe about an hour or two after we finish up. We are in the process of completing these 20 videos uh, because the, of the pandemic situation. The, it, the Santa Fe Indian market, international Indian market, has been out of, um, it's been canceled this year. And it's been canceled because of the pandemic, along with so many of the other venues where Native Americans sell their wares. At, at the Indian market, Santa Fe welcomes about 100,000 visitors to our town and between 1,500 and 2,000 Native Americans. And not only is it a wonderful, wonderful sale of their arts and crafts but for the visitor, but also for the Native Americans themselves. It's a way to get reacquainted with the people that they perhaps see only once a year. But most importantly, for almost all of them, Indian market is a substantial part of their annual income, and for some of them, it's their only uh, income for the entire year. And so, uh, in an effort not to leave, leave them completely stranded, this is why we decided to do these videos. And along with seeing their demonstrations, and of course we'll be talking through this whole thing, you'll also have a view of some of the pots and figures that Sammy and Melanie make. And if you would like to see them a little closer and in detail, the place to do that is on our website. And it's andreafisherpottery.com. And you click on artists, uh, N for Naranjo for Sammy, and G for Guterres for Melanie, and click on either one of those letters and look for their names in that group uh, with their last name, the same alphabet, and uh, their pieces will appear. They are in descending order of price. So the first one that comes up will be the most expensive one we have, and as you scroll down, you will see the ones that are um, are the least expensive ones in their pieces, of their pieces. We uh, hope that you will participate and share uh, and acquire all those, all those kinds of good things. And uh, what we'll have a little later is both Sammy and Melanie talking to you about their pieces and their, their designs. We are... Uh, 
We've been closed. Andrea Fisher Fine Pottery is still closed, but open only by appointment. And we've been closed since the middle of March, but we're still continuing to pay our employees. We are uh, still buying from the potters. We're still accepting consignments. And we have, at this point, we have absolutely no idea when uh, we are finally going to swing open our doors to the public. New Mexico's been doing pretty well as far as um, the COVID uh, virus has been um, affecting people. But uh, we're doing, you know, we're really trying our best to be as isolated from the rest of the world as possible. Now, if you are interested in buying any of Melanie's pieces you can, or, or Sammy's, you can um, call us or you can email us. Uh, as they say on the shopping network, operators are standing by. And if you would like to ask any questions of Sammy or Melanie, uh, just go on the YouTube chat part, type in your questions, and we will be happy to uh, answer them just as soon as we can and as thoroughly as we can. Well, thank you again for tuning in. I, we really, really appreciate uh, you uh, watching us today. And without further ado, I would like to introduce Melanie Gutierrez and Sammy Naranjo. Melanie, can you uh, say a few words for us? I'm Melanie Gutierrez from the Pueblo of Santa Clara. And I do pottery. You do pottery. And how long? Pottles. Yeah. How long? How long have you been doing pottery? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. And Sammy, you want to say hello to everybody? Hi there. My name is Sammy Naranjo, also from the Pueblo of Santa Clara. Um, I've been doing pottery. I say about thirty years or more. Thirty years. Sammy, yeah. you're not old enough to be doing it thirty years. You must have started when you were two. <laughs> yeah. Just about. I, grew huh? up with, I came out with the clay in my hand. Wow, wow. <laughs> I was born so, with the clay in my hand. So who's going to go first? Are you, Melanie, going to... Uh... Well, I'm going to be um, mixing the clay, but um, he's going to show you um, pretty much where, where the clay the... comes from. Oh, and okay. Well, then why don't you start mixing clay and telling us a little bit about the materials you're using and go from there. And Sammy... Uh, Maybe you could, um, Sammy and Melanie did something really fun. You know, we don't uh, ask the potters to do specific things, but what they feel comfortable doing. And in this case, Sammy felt very comfortable about bringing some photographs that he took uh, so that you could get an idea of where all this clay comes from. You know, most of the potters uh, would say that it came from the hills, or say that they uh, dug it out of a, a, an area on their um, location that looked like a cave. But we have some actual shots. Now, yeah. don't get any ideas. You can't go to Santa Clara and collect the clay there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, at least it will give you an idea of how this uh, process begins begins with a hideous amount of work. <laughs> anyway, uh, Sammy, you want to tell us about the photographs? Okay, yeah, well, most of them, all the materials we get, we get um, locally around our Pueblo area. And so our, my fo first photo is going to be with the uh, with, uh, clay. We dig about, we get about maybe four or five miles from where we live. And what we do is we dig it out. Once we dig it out, It'll look like this. It's like a chunk of Hershey. And what we'll do is we'll bring it. We dig out, maybe we'll get about 15 to 25 gallon buckets of clay. 15 or 25 yeah, five gallon buckets. That, that would last us about maybe six months. And wow. so once we get the clay, what we'll do is we'll, dry, we'll get home, we'll dry it out on a on, a, on our table outside. What I like to do is let the rain hit it. And the, what the rain does is it melts the clay and it makes it easier to sift. Well, now, is it in a place where the rain can melt it? Um, yeah, when it's on the table, 
No, I mean in, in, the, in the earth. In the earth, is I it? guess, because what we're doing is we're digging. We're digging it, in the middle of the mountain. Like in the cave. Oh, you're, di like you're yeah. digging, digging in the ground. Where it's protected. Yeah. Otherwise, that clay would just wash away. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Basically, okay. yeah. So when we're getting it, it's actually still wet, and it kind of looks like a Hershey dark chocolatey color. And that's actually how it looks with the shiny shininess to it. Huh. And so once it's, like, completely dried, what we'll do is we'll soak it in... Um, in so you dry, you dry it first. Yeah. We'll put it on the makeshift table, and then we'll let, let the rain hit it and get it weatherized. And then what we'll do is um, once it's completely dry, then we actually sift our clay wet. Then what we'll do is wet. we'll end up soaking it in, in water. We'll soak it in water for a day or two. And then what, we, what we'll do is we'll end up screening it. What I use is a regular window screen um, to get all the bigger rocks out. Then I use a real fine screen, which I don't have a picture of that. I guess it's not in here. So once it's sifted, the clay, like on the second screening, usually takes about, maybe about four hours to do a five gallon bucket. So when you pour it through the screen, is it liquid? Yeah, or, pretty or much. Or is it dusty? It's liquid. It's liquid, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's pretty much actually water. And so what I like to do is let it sit. I let it sit maybe for about two to three months. Two to three months? Yeah, because it's practically actually water when I'm sifting it. It makes it a lot easier. And so once it's, um, like I said, once it's green, we'll let it sit. And then about maybe about 10 miles from where we get our clay, we get a white sand. And we'll, what we'll do is we'll bring that home dry and we'll what? sift that. Well, Sammy, you said the clay, all of this is collected at Santa Clara. Yes. Um, how big is Santa Clara Pueblo? If you could have to drive 10 miles and still be in the Pueblo's border. It's, the reservation is pretty big. I mean, yeah. it's very big because it goes into our canyon area. Uh -huh. So I wouldn't really, you know, I never at, would ask that. I mean, it's pretty big. <laughs> I mean, I, I should have been, um, already known how big Santa Clara is, but it's oh. probably one of the biggest reservations uh -huh. in, in, in most Pueblos. And, yeah. and how big is it? I mean, how, how, uh, how many people live there? There's pro probably about maybe 2,700 to 3,000 3, people that 27 to 3, live in the, on uh -huh. the reservation. Yeah. Yeah. But you have more tribal members that live off the reservation. Yes. Uh -huh. There's some that maybe live out of town close by that work. You know, a lot of people aren't really doing this art no more. Uh -huh. And so, you know, the, to, in order to get jobs, what they're doing is they're moving out of the, the Pueblo area and finding jobs. But they actually come back. And so, okay, so you have gone out to dig the clay five miles from your house. Yeah. And it, is, it exists in the, the cliffs like the picture that you showed. Can you get close to the clay with a vehicle? Yes. We you can, can. We can drive up to it. Oh, lucky you. Because yeah. some of the other people told me that once they, they get as close as they can, and then they have to carry those five gallon buckets out and it's two or three miles yeah well uh -huh. these ones the white, sand. the white sand you have to for well, after like when the clay is ready when we let it sit for two to three months what we'll do is we'll get a white sand and what we'll do is we'll we'll bring, get this we'll dig this out dry then we'll sift that also through two screens and um what um what our white sand kind of looks like is that Digging it from the ground. Yeah, we're digging it from the ground, digging it out, and is then it, once is it sand like river sand, or is it sand like volcanic ash? Volcanic ash. It's so it's volcanic ash. Yeah, that's uh -huh, what. But that it is. looks like sand. It looks like sand. And it, it feels, feels like, like sand. sand. Yes. <laughs> so it must be sand. <laughs> yeah, that's why I call it sand. Uh huh. Yeah. So when we dig this out, like I said, we bring this home. Then what we'll do is we'll sift it. Something with like this. We'll sift it through a, a regular window screen, but I use a real fine curtain. And so something similar to this here, because you can see that's what that is, is a, is a curtain. And so 
Once that's sifted, then it's ready to be mixed. And that's something Melanie's gonna do today. But we don't mix it by hand. What we do is we'll mix it on a tarp, like in our kitchen area. And um, this is quite different for us now, mixing it by I've, hand. I've um, never done it by hand. Always do it by feet. <laughs> by, by foot? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. So once, once, the, well, clay, you, you once mean... the clay and the white sand are dried and the water that we drained from the buckets, we'll then go and get a, a tarp and lay it on the kitchen floor. And so, well, you know, I could slip my shoes off uh, if you needed a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> it's good exercise. It is. It's good exercise. Yeah. It's so you're all sort day, of you're, all day thing. So you're kind of like marching yeah. through this uh, goo. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so usually, like when we do them, when we do it on tarps, we're usually doing maybe about four or five gallon buckets of clay, four or five gallon buckets of white sand and um, what I'll do is I'll mix it I'll put white sand clay white sand clay and that's one picture this is another picture here is, is it typical for people to collect that much clay at a time not really um, I I usually do because I don't really like to go for it so I take <laughs> I, I, what I do is I take well, well we'll get a quite a bit all at one time so it's like going so to the we, dentist huh yeah, yeah pretty exactly. much pretty much huh so what i um what i do is you know i when i can take advantage of my boys um i got three boys and when i can when they have time and we have time we go up we get it and um but not too often not too often not like too twice often. a month we have twice a, a year yeah it's we're... not a question it's a comment and the comment is, is that we just finished getting all of Sammy's and Melanie's pots on the website. So now you can have a look at all of their pieces on the website. Uh, just search for, or go to, go to artists and then N for Naranjo and then Sammy for Sammy's pieces or G for Guterres and Melanie for Melanie's turtles. Well, that's good. Now we have all your pieces up and oh. running. That's and everyone should remember the reason that we're here is because we're the substitution for Indian market and everything that people buy from us will benefit Sam and Sammy and Melanie. And uh, anyway, sorry for the interruption. Sammy, go ahead. Keep okay. going. Yeah, and like I said, we, we do um, four or five, buck, five gallon buckets of clay. Then what we'll do is we'll mix it with four or five gallon buckets of white sand, now, depending. Is that amount of clay typical for people or do they use less or more or a lot of people use less but like I say I only would like to mix it um, once every six months you know yeah. once we, every once every six months yeah so we have a question that's coming from Keith and Keith would like to know does each potter have their own secret location for getting the clay or do most potters from Santa Clara Pueblo use the same clay location um, and who hunts for new clay locations um, we actually have some sacred hills that we gather our clay, and it's usually closed, closed off. So, and the families, you know, know where to get the clay. Um, there's different spots where we can actually go get the clay. So, so the uh, mountains don't look right now like they're gonna run out soon. <laughs> well, but, I I think the, but the, the what part of the question is, is there, they're like a, a Naranjo clay area no. and a Tafoya clay area. It's and a Santa Clara Pueblo clay, clay area. Oh, so, yeah. Every, yeah, so everybody, 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 yeah. everybody, everybody goes everybody to the same that, yeah. places. Yeah. So there are no secret locations no. or anything. No. And, and about finding new clay sources, has that been necessary? No. 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 It's just all there. Yeah, well, we have like three spots where we get the clay, so they're uh -huh. in different spots. Yeah. And so, yeah. And is the clay from those different spots different? Um, no. They're, no. It's basically the same. Basically the same. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, I hope that answers the question. And, you know, like with our white sand, we get this white sand uh, around our Puye Cliff areas, you know. Uh -huh. we, that we have to park and then we walk for yeah. about... If, Maybe if, a half a mile. If people don't it, under, know what Puye cliffs are, um, there it Santa Clara Pueblo sits very close or on 
the Rio Grande River. In fact, the Rio Grande cuts right through the middle of Santa Clara Pueblo. And to the west of Santa Clara Pueblo are the Jemez Mountains. And in the foothills of the Jemez Mountains, there's a large flat area where are, there are lots and lots of prehistoric ruins. And those uh, prehistoric ruins are um, called the Puye Cliffs. Does Puye mean something in, in uh, Tewa? Is it? I'm not too sure. <laughs> yeah, what do they say? The, the <laughs> rabbit walks or something like that. Where the rabbit walks? Well, they have a show that the area where that they, we come from. Yeah, this is where Puye Cliffs Oh, Oh, area good. Is. Oh, you brought pictures too. Oh, this is really good. I don't know if you could see that. And so, yeah. Puye Cliffs, uh, and in that area, that's where the volcanic yeah. ash is, the, where the white sand is. So yeah, that's um, basically where we um, get our, our clay at. And so, yeah, well, our I, white sand, should I say. I know that the Pueblo's closed now. And I know that the Puye Cliffs have, have been closed off and on for various reasons. Yeah, it's been closed. Once, once this pandemic is over, can people go and visit the Puye Cliffs? Yeah, when it's open. Good. Yeah, so I have a couple questions coming in, and Jordan Naranjo <coughs> would like to know, what is the time process of making a beautiful pot of yours? Oh, wow. It depends on the size. And the materials and as well. As if we have all the materials, it's a shorter time. Um, I'd say about a couple of months. Well, you know, Jordan, um, that's a question that people ask all the time. And the answer is very difficult. <coughs> Excuse me, we, we have a fire going on here and the smoke is just killing me. But, um, and the reason the answer is difficult is because if you've been listening to Sammy, he's talking about only getting clay once a year and retrieving that clay from the, um, the cliffs is certainly an all day project. Cleaning the clay can take weeks and um, then the various stages of pottery making, <coughs> excuse me, the various stages of pottery making need time to dry and to do all the various things as you go along. So you don't make one piece and take it all the way to the end and then start making the next one. You have lots of things going on, yes. lots of balls in the air. Yeah, we sure do. Like, um, I don't concentrate on just one piece. Um, I <coughs> different, um, this one? Yeah. So now that I'm done mixing the clay, um, what we'll do is we'll leave it on the tarp on our kitchen floor for a couple of days, well, usually two days, just to um, let the clay settle and sit. <coughs> then also what we'll do is it helps um, get the clay the right consistency for making. <coughs> we also have another question that is coming from the internet. And is it does each Pueblo have their own specific clay gathering areas? Yes. Well, they, we do. You know, I know um, other places do as well. So I'm pretty sure, you know, people that do the Yeah, do you're the right, pottery. you're right, Melanie. They all have their own separate places. And those separate places are for their Pueblos only. Yeah. It's a rare yeah. occasion where um, clay or any of the other materials um, our share. So this that clay has have, happened in the past. So this clay I have, and um, I let it sit, and I can actually start making, you know, now since I finished mixing. And so, yeah. So I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and. And what I'm, what we're known for, we're known for. I'm known for the etch work, but what I started off doing was deep carve when I first started in the uh, 80s, I guess you could say. <laughs> I, I did deep carve work. 
until like maybe the early 90s and it was when I started mm -hmm. doing scrapito or X work. Mm -hmm. um, but what, I want, what I'll do is while she's making, I'll start designing a, a par mm -hmm. to deep carve. Well, I have a couple other uh, questions and comments too. Um, to answer a little more of Jordan's question, because I was choking because of the smoke that's out there, outside. Um, how many pots a year do you make, Sammy? Rough, roughly. Roughly? Roughly. Um, we average maybe about, I'll say, 10 pieces a month. Okay. Or less. No and more. And so 10 pieces a month for you. What about you, Melanie? Mm -hmm. Roughly. I guess a year. A year. A year. I could say like maybe about 500. 500? Oh, really? Because of the fact that I do small pieces as well, and I love uh -huh. to do the smaller turtles. And so I like to work on different stages, but I actually like to do small, small pieces. As so well. if, if you add those two together, because I assume you both use the same clay. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. That, Jordan, if you divide that by the number of days in a year, I guess that'll give you an idea how long it takes to make one by, you know, sort of taking the average. But yeah. since there's so many things going on at the same time, it's really difficult to tell. And if Melanie makes ten, uh, makes tiny ones, she can make, make lot. lots of them. Yeah, and if I Sammy, can get it quite a yeah. bit done. And if Sammy makes big ones, and, you know, it's something that you might start to, uh, to etch in your design, and then, you know, you've got to go do something with your kids or yeah. uh, go to the grocery store and you may not come back to it for another week. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and you'll do something else in the meantime. Or if it's a day to make pots, well, you might make lots of them that one day. Yeah. So uh, I hope, Jordan, that that answers the question. Now, Sammy, do you make pots also? Yes, I do. Because, you know, oftentimes... Um, the making of pottery is gender specific. Yeah. There was a time when the making of the pots was strictly women's work, and men didn't do that sort of thing yeah. any more than women would go out hunting. Uh, and so it's only recent that uh, men are making their own pots. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. um, I am. Um, Kind of really slowed down on my work a lot, you know. I guess the older you get, the slower you get. Oh so. yeah, you're just ancient, yeah. Sammy. Yeah, yeah. Right, and right. So. We're gonna send you to the home pretty <laughs> soon because you're so old yeah. uh -huh, and slowing down. Yeah. But uh, who did you learn from, Sammy? I learned from my um, my grandmother. I was adopted to her. Uh -huh. um, what do, she's what the do, one that. What does me. that mean? That you, you lived with your grandmother instead of your, your parents? Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Your birth parents. My birth parents, yeah. Uh -huh. um, my grandmother um, raised me since I was two days old. Uh -huh. I was born in Denver. Um, two days after that, I was shipped to Santa Clara, and I've been there ever since. And my grandmother raised me, so I call her mom. Well, it I sounds like they only bought you a one-way ticket, huh? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> And, but, so, and who went, and your grandmother's name? My grandmother's name, my mother's name is Flora Naranjo. Uh -huh. um, she was a pretty, she did pottery also. She did the deep carp, the painted pottery. Um, but yeah, she's the one that taught me and um, been doing it since I was small, you know. Wow. You, couldn't, you couldn't say you were bored. Yeah. If you said you were bored, you would have to go out there and cut weeds. So that's how I ended up pick, picking up the clay uh -huh. or find something to do, you know. Well, while we've been talking, I have noticed that uh, there's some flying fingers uh, sitting next to you. Uh, <laughs> why don't you tell us, uh, Melanie, what you've been up to? I mean, good grief. Well, there, was, I'm, um... there was a glob of clay and sand, and all of a sudden... There's the beginnings of a pot. How did that happen? <laughs> well, usually I use my um, palm for the the bottom um, butt bow, I call it. You know, the, the pookie. <laughs> uh -huh, the pookie. Yeah. I was told what the word pookie translates to in uh, Tewa. 
Mm -hmm. That that I was the told. Ball ball? Well, I, I, yeah, I, I, I was told that when you're sitting down, your pookie is the first thing that hits the chair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's just a butt bow, you know. You, a um, butt bow. In every okay. language, B, B, it, it means turn. So uh -huh. you're going to be turning the butt bow, so B, B, B. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Joseph uh, Naranjo and Kevin Naranjo were here giggling away when I asked them what a pookie was. And uh, so they finally told me the first thing that hits the chair when you sit down. <laughs> <laughs> True. So, so what you've done there is that you have shaped uh, the, the ball of clay in your hand and you have sort of hollowed it out, pinched it out, slapped it out, and then put it into yeah, a so little see, dish. Yes, so see, you know, um, when you actually grab your clay, you're going to be stretching it out and hitting it at the same time. That's actually helping the, to get the air bubbles out. So. And, and there, it seems like there's some fabric there. Why, why do you have fabric there? This is actually um, just a bag, so it don't stick to the to so the bowl, it doesn't the stick to the bowl. So that yeah. that way you can move it around and and you could take it out of there when it's yeah. time to do that. I have never seen anyone make a, a pot that fast ever. <laughs> <laughs> I've been teaching and demonstrating for quite a while now, so I've been. And where do you teach? I actually. Um, I am known for um, red willow basket weaving. My dad is um, a basket weaver, and I learned to do that since I was about maybe eight, nine, and he was the weaver that taught different people, and just watching him sitting there learning, you sit, watch, and learn when you're doing the base of it. We'll go collect the red willows. And so the red willows back in the late 80s, early 90s was kind of like a dying art in our area. Mm -hmm. And so when um, that time, one of the basket weavers, I think from OK Oinge, uh, OK Pueblo, formerly known as San Juan, they he ended up um, teaching my dad, and before he passed away, he had told my dad, you know, um, please let, you know, let and keep the basket weaving alive, you know, do what I am taught you, you know, to revive it. And, and your dad's name? Joseph Gutierrez. Joseph Gutierrez. Uh, from Santa Clara. From Santa Clara. Pueblo. And you're from, in both His, Mama and Papa, for you are from Santa Clara? Yeah, well, yeah. on my dad's side, uh, we grew up around pottery. Uh, my mom did pottery as well. And your mom's and name? Donna Gutierrez. Uh -huh. She passed away last year. Um, so, with my father on his side, my grandparents are Escapula and Bal Gutierrez, and they were actually known for their pottery. They sold out of their home. They had a little curio, a little curio in their living area, and we would see a lot of people come and go into the house, and you know, we we're so used to it. So they had all their pottery work things and everything there that were, we weren't supposed to touch and just to leave be. And You'd leave the merchandise alone, <laughs> leave the inventory alone. Pretty much. Well, well yeah. do you, now, um, is your dad still alive? Yes. Is he still making baskets? He actually still is, yes. Uh-huh. And now, you know, um, he doesn't teach anymore. He leaves that up to me. So I end up liking to, you know, when I get asked or when he get asked, we go and um, teach the kids in the Pueblo, um, different places. We've gone to Tsuki as well, you know, when they have their their um, Tewa program or whatnot. And T Tsuki is another Pueblo that is right 
outside of Santa Fe, the closest Pueblo to, to the city of Santa Fe. Uh, you can almost throw a rock uh, from the top of the hill here and hit Tezuki Pueblo because it's, uh, it's very close. And uh, a lot of their traditional uh, arts and crafts have died over the years. And one of the reasons is, is that they were, people were employed in Santa Fe because it was so close. And, uh, but some of those um, crafts like pottery making are being revived there, which is really great. And so what are you, what, tell me more about what you're doing there so quickly. What's that, that thing I'm in your hand? Doing a little vase. It's a big tongue depressor, I guess you could say. Uh -huh. Stolen yeah. from the local doctor's office, right? No, it's borrowed. Huh? <laughs> oh, borrow, oh, borrowed, right. Borrowed from the local doctor. borrowed, too. Well, I'm sure the doctor would love to have it back yeah. someday. Uh -huh. Or not. And so you're using that tool to... Um, wet your, your clay and to smooth it and See, to scrape with, it? With our clay, our clay can't be too wet or too dry. It has to be just right. And so we actually do the coiling method. Uh -huh. And so, you know, some people think, well, is it done on a wheel? You know, no, it actually no. ain't done on a wheel. Everything's, you know, hand done straight from the earth yeah, well, itself. Well, you know, the reason that that pots aren't thrown on the wheel is because, first of all, uh, the wheel didn't show up uh, in New Mexico till really, really late in time. And second of all, pottery making is so related to the religion that um, even though the wheel exists now, it won't be used because uh, traditional pieces are made the way Melanie's making those pieces. So while you are, your flying fingers are making a pot faster than I've ever seen anyone make a pot before in my life, I'll talk to Sammy. What are you up to? I'm over here trying to design to deep carve a pot. Uh huh. Now, do you have you drawn this out on paper, or do you, <laughs> or is it in your head? <laughs> no, it, it it just comes out. You know when. You just visualize, you'll sit it there and say, what am I going to put on this pot? And um, that's what I did. So, and what, so, so the pot tells you pretty much something about it? Yeah, it usually oh. speaks, has its own mind, and tells you, hey, I want this on it. And um, yeah, I am um, deep carve. I um, started when I was much younger. This is what I started off doing. And now I left it to Melanie. She does a lot of it. Um, and sometimes they'll collaborate with our work, like her turtles. I'll, I'll sometimes deep carve her turtles. Etch. But, and then after that, then etch it. Yeah, but so, so you two are independent of each other for the most part in terms of your pottery making, maybe in life too, I don't know, but I won't go that far, uh, but independent from each other, then there's an occasion where you will uh -uh. Uh, collaborate. And when you collaborate, do you sign both your names to the pieces? Yes, places? yes we do. But she takes the money. No, I'm just kidding. But she, take, <laughs> but she takes the money. Yeah. I heard that, but she takes the money. Yeah. <laughs> you go, girl. So it looks like you have a pencil. Yeah, that's what I use. And you're sort of drawing the design on now yeah. with a pencil? Yeah, this one, what I'm doing is putting a feather design uh -huh. on this. And... I usually don't use a, a ruler. What I use is a business card. And anybody's in particular? Um, actually, <laughs> this is her mom's. Oh, her mom's. Not the local sheriff? Or, uh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, good. The bail bondsman. The bail bondsman. <laughs> yeah, the bail bondsman. That would be a good business card to have. Yeah, you know, um, and like how I start off, what I'll do is I'll um, mark my spaces here. Like I'll mark it here and put an X and an X. And so I'll do the same thing all the way around. And so when I put the line all the way around, then what I'll do is I'll 
do the same thing, mark it from wherever I want, how big a feather I want. Then I'll mark it all the way around and then draw my line. And so now what I'm doing is putting in my feathers. So usually a lot of, you know, the artists, you know, you'll, uh, they use the, the cards like this. And you'll see a lot of lines, like a lot. So I put X's on mine so I know what lines I'm using. Now with the feathers, um, it's like the old plan ahead sign. I mean, you try to make the feathers, I would assume, pretty consistent in width. Pretty much, yes. Pretty much. What happens when you get to the end and it's not looking good? <laughs> um, Either keep, one really fat one or two really, really skinny ones. I'll keep going over and over. I'll erase it and I'll keep going around until I get the oh, even. Oh, until you take a little slice off of everybody. So it fits. Yep. Gotcha. That's what I did here. I was trying to be quick to see if it would even. There's a lot of times where I'll even out all the way around. Mm -hmm. But when, there, when I don't, then I end up um, going, I'll erase it and make it shorter and do the same thing all the, all the way around. Now, Melanie, you're starting to bring the, the piece in? Yeah, this one's, um, I guess it wants to be a bow. I was going to do it a vase. But That's another thing, too. Wanna... Like when you're making, uh -huh. you say, I'm going to make a vase. Times it doesn't want to be a vase. It, it doesn't want to be a vase. Yeah. yeah. This one seems like it wants to be a seed pot. <laughs> so when I make the... When I make the pieces, um, what I'm gonna do now is put it to the side and let it sit for a while before I start another coil. Well, uh, when you put it aside and let it sit for a while, maybe you and Derek can go over and talk a little bit about your turtles. And okay. uh, that would be just great because uh, that would the turtles, uh, did turtles come in flocks or herds? <laughs> Are there herds of turtles? I don't know. I don't know how they describe turtles. You know, prides of lions, and and uh, but uh, we have quite a few of your turtles, some little teeny teeny ones, and some uh, the vase. I yeah, mean the, some big mamas, some yeah. big mama turtles. Mm -hmm. And also the vase that we collab, I mean the bowl that we collaborated yeah, on. Yeah, well, well, you'll get to see the bowl that uh, Sammy and Melanie collaborated on. And that, you know, I have never seen a piece that big that you, the two of you have collaborated on. Was this the first time in Venture for, yes. for that collaboration? Yeah. It was a the, challenging one. Yeah. Because yeah. I, um, I um, like to collaborate with my siblings. Um, yeah, and who were your siblings? Um, my brother is um, Chris Martinez. Uh huh. Um, and and this Chris, Chris, I know has been a firefighter as well as a potter. Is he out fighting fires in California? Or, uh, no, or he's, here? he's. I think he's retired. <laughs> then my sister is Vicky Martinez. Uh huh. Yeah, and um, she we collaborated on. We try to, um, like she deep carves it, then I go back and then I etch on it. And so we did a couple of hers. Yeah. Um, she does nice work, so does he. And so I think I've only collaborated with my brother twice, I think. Mm -hmm. My sister I've done a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah, I like to do, I like to work with her a lot. But. Well, Chris Martinez does an awful lot of uh, big pieces. Yeah, he and, does. Uh, he does big pieces, which is... Just great. And uh, before he retired, he uh, talked about the various fires that, you know, he would come in and, and say, well, I have a plot for sale, but you're not going to see me for a while because I'm going to be in such and such a place fighting fires. And uh, then he would come back and, and um, do lots of uh, 
pieces of pottery. But we have a fire going on here in, in Santa Fe. Uh, and last night when I got home from work, my house smelled like I had lit a, a, a fire in the fireplace and forgot to open the damper. And it was just, the whole inside of the house was all smoky. And this morning, driving from the north into Santa Fe, you could not see the Sangre de Cristo Mountains, if you're familiar with the area here. And those mountains are pretty close, and that's where the fire is. And it was just solid, whitish gray smoke. Yeah. Uh, really, really bad. I mean, I usually don't wear my face mask in the car, but I put it on because uh, there was just so much smoke in the air. It, was, it looked like uh, those pictures you see of Shanghai where you can't see a block ahead of you because there's so much pollution in the air. But it was interesting because they said the air quality in Santa Fe was not dangerous, uh, even though you couldn't see anything. So I guess that's a nice testament to the quality of air we had, that even a horrible fire like that couldn't uh, take care of it. But um, they... As of this morning, I heard that it was 5% contained. 5%. 5% and nothing, right? And it's in a, a very treacherous area. Yeah, uh, really steep, big. steep cliffs and no roads at all. And the firemen uh, can't drive any vehicles anywhere close to the fire. And so they have to hike with all their equipment and those big heavy uniforms that they have, they have to hike several miles in uh, just to get to the place where uh, there are flames. But obviously the wind has shifted. Uh, usually it's prevailing westerlies, but I don't know why it's going towards the west instead of away from the west. This is very, very unusual for us. But of course it's nothing like what's going on in California. Yeah, California. Oh. Yeah, I saw they evacuated uh, the University of California at Santa Cruz, which is my son Derek's uh, alma mater. Yeah. Uh, he's our Martin Scorsese, uh, the director of all these uh, sort of informal uh, de demonstrations yeah. and, and conversa conversations. Yeah, the, all the houses burning up there. Oh, I know. It's really, it's really terrible. It's terrible. It dry as a bone. And, you know, people talk about climate change and what's going on with climate change. Well, what we're seeing is hot and dry and fire. And uh, now that there are two hurricanes in the Gulf, two side by side. Yeah. Which yeah. is really weird. So hopefully we can do something about it before it's too late. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, see in a few minutes all of Melanie's turtles. And are, are you ready, Mr. Derek? Yeah. Okay, I'm go ready. for it. Over here with Melanie and the display of turtles. So, Melanie, would you just grab a turtle and tell me about it? <laughs> this one is one of my medium pieces that I've done. Here, down here, you have the life line. Then you have some butterflies, daisies, and then some roses. My Indian name is Yellow Rose. Okay. So that's actually why I put roses on my pieces of artwork. And then also what I do on the roses is I actually inlay a little bit of turquoise mm -hmm. onto the eyes and on the uh, turtle itself. Actually... And so you do butterflies, or butterflies your favorite insect? Yeah, I like butterflies. So does Sammy. We, we kind of in love with the butterflies and some some other other designs that some other designs. I guess you could say like this one has a rose. Mm -hmm. And then um, these ones have pretty cool turquoise that um, I like, so I just wanted to in the end. These are simple. These are they have the green paint and with the polish on them. This one's actually a star flower. And these two pieces, me and Sammy worked on together. Um, I'll do the, I had him etch the whole piece. 
So he's actually scratching into the pottery and taking off all the designing. And then with this turtle, it's actually deep carved with a, with a lifeline design. Then it has your Kiva steps and feather design. This one has the feather design as well. That has the mountain and then the lifelines as well on that as well. And so would you point out the feathers for the people out there? These yep. are the and, feather. And in the feathers, I see these little kind of what look like steps. What are those? Those guys? are Kiva steps. And what are Kiva steps? Usually men have to walk up the stairs and down the stairs in order to get in. They just don't open the door. So it's kind of like church. When you walk in, you put the holy water on. Mm -hmm. And so it's said that when the men are going to go gather, when they're walking up the stairs, all the bad spirits or whatnot come off them. So when they're going walking in, they can all meet in good spirits. Mm -hmm. and so that's pretty much what it's. Yeah, and then in so, here there's some other designs. Do they have any meaning that you know about? I'm not too sure on those ones. Okay. Uh, because Sammy did do the two feather designs. This is the last piece that I have with the with the roses and the butterflies. But this piece is the one that we actually did together. We um he did the pottery. I did the polishing, mm -hmm. and we actually polish it in the inside. It's so rare these days to see pieces that are polished yes, on the it inside. Sure is. And this how is so hard beautiful. was that to do? Oh my gosh, this one took me like about, I think it took me like about almost five to six hours mm -hmm. because you have to be quick. And I don't just do one top or or the inside at one time. You're, I'm, I'm wetting the whole pottery and I'm actually polishing the whole thing all at one time. Mm -hmm. And so I actually have an advantage because we do live in the Pueblo, the main Pueblo, and we do have air conditioning. Oh, nice. And so I can actually polish um, either in the afternoon if I wanted to, or in early in the morning, I'll start. I usually start in the afternoon. Well. I don't know when I start because you have to be in good spirit to start polishing. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not in the mood to polish or you're not in the mood to work, it's not going to work out for you and we, you lose a lot of pieces that way. Mm -hmm. And so you have to, the pot usually tells you, I guess, when, when to work on it. And so, yeah. Well, but that's, yeah, that's really that quite one wonderful. That quite a bit. And his work too, he has the Kiva step design. Mm -hmm. Then he has a water serpent. Well, I, Sammy usually does do a water serpent on most of his pieces. And what does a water serpent mean? We pray that a water serpent in, in the morning to bring us good luck throughout the day. So mm -hmm. that's pretty much what the water serpent entails. Well, and water in this state is super duper important and uh, we could use some more of it. So if anybody's out there willing to do some rain dances for us, we right. could really use some at this point. Right, because he always has a lifeline on his pieces and then he always has his bear paw. I think the bear paw is his signature. Mm -hmm. The bear paw usually symbolizes strength, power, and the bear brings medicine. So mm -hmm. that's actually what, what it does. So. so we'll show the bear paw for everybody. And then we'll show the head of the Avanyu. And the head of the Avanyu oh, usually has a lightning bolt tongue. And then the, the head of the snake usually represents the clouds that are building over the mountains. And then the body of the snake, which goes back and forth, is kind of like the ebb and the flow of the river. And water in New Mexico is one of those really important things that we could use as much as humanly possible oh, yes. at this point. And I actually forgot that he had his bear here. Yep. He has a two-piece bear. And with the two-piece bear, it comes with a fish. And see, my grandparents, um, Escapula and Raul Gutierrez, my dad's parents, they did a lot of um, bears, turtles, pigs, penguins. And I do those as well, but with his work, it is so difficult to try to get a polished bear mm -hmm. with the whole bear polished. This is very time consuming and it takes a lot of work just to do the polishing itself on that as well. Mm -hmm. So the fish is fully polished and also the bear is fully polished and that's actually what Sammy does. 
Melanie, I have a couple questions for you too. Yes, I want to know more about turtles. And um, what do turtles signify in the Santa Clara? Turtles are coach? longer life and luck. Uh -huh. And so that's actually what the turtle represents. And, and I love doing the turtles. You love uh, so that you need that long life and that, and we all need some luck, that's for sure. No, I do them because, you know, I wish, you know, like not only for baskets that I do or other arts or, you know, I don't want our tradition to be lost. So that's why I'm very happy that you, you're doing this, you know. It, you, it shows to the people and our people that, you know, we're, we're still doing it. And I and longer life for the turtles to me is longer life for the pottery to stay in our Pueblo and live mm -hmm. on. And that's one thing that I try to push. You know, I don't matter what it is or any art you do, you know, my aunt, she was known for sewing and she did sew for some movies and stuff like that. And then, you know, we got the weavers we got jewelry makers, we, you know, we, we got a lot of talented artists that are painters and everything. And, you know, without our arts getting pushed out there, we, we would have nothing to show. And well, so the turtles, to me, it's like they're walking their little way to show, you know, hey, you know, uh, this is how pottery is made and this is how it is. And they're fun, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they're pretty yeah. fun and they're cute. <laughs> and they're cute, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, do you have, have you been making turtles for a long time? Well, before how I started, um, in 2005 is when me and Sammy collaborated together. Uh -huh. He actually was helping uh, when I had a class teaching it for um, the kids. So with red willow baskets, I teach them, but I teach the kids with pipe cleaners. So uh -huh. that way they could have a lot of color. And so, uh, well, Ooh, me, do you teach adults with pipe cleaners? It sounds like fun. Actually, so I, I do. Sign me up. But sign what's so up. funny is yeah. that the adults get more frustrated with the, than the kids because <laughs> of the wire not going the same the way that they want. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, but, but yeah, it's. So yeah. I have a question that's coming from the internet, and the question is about the green, and how and when do you apply the green, and what is it? Okay, the green is a natural paint, just like our red paint. And so now that I finish the pottery that I'm doing, I'm actually going to show you with a turtle how I dry the pot and what paints we use, and Sammy will actually uh -huh. show a little well, bit about the Do you know what the... the you know, the black uh, paint tends to be iron oxide. And whether it's from a rock that some people collect or from, it's from beeweed, spinach, a, a member yeah. of the spinach family. Do you know what the, the green is? There, um, well, he actually has the paints, Sammy does, and if we can go back and, you know, show my connection. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. But let's talk about your turtles a little longer because I'm really, really. And you didn't have any. I thought you had. I, I thought you know, um, you had some left, and so no, I had. We never have any. I love of your doing turtles. the wedding vases. Yeah. And what's neat is that we do the deep carved and etched wedding vases uh -huh. and the two tone. And so I was like, oh my gosh, you don't have <laughs> wedding vases. No, but, but I like doing that too. But, but, but with the turtles. The green, the green is actually, um, it's already, I guess, the paint that's crushed, and we just add water, and we use it. But is it copper? Is it, do you know what mineral it might be? Sammy might I'm not know. too sure, but okay. Sammy probably might but know. But what does it look like in the raw? Is it green? I have some paint with me. Um, but, I mean, the actual mineral the, oh, that you the, take out of the ground, what color like a, is it? It's like a... Lightish turquoise, lightish, huh. like like a greenish turquoise, almost. Well, almost like maybe this stone here. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. And you, the the addition of green is relatively new for you. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. Uh huh. You know, there's not too many people that work with the green paint, yeah. and you can also polish them, but it's harder to work with than it is with our original clay that we uh -huh. used with the I know eight, that the there are a few potters at San Ildefonso Pueblo and we had talked about uh, some green on their their pieces 
And at that point, I didn't really know whether it was a commercial paint or whether oh, it was no. a natural one. You can actually uh -huh. lick your stone when you're polishing it, and uh -huh. you know what? The, nothing toxic. It comes from earth. It's yeah. <laughs> nothing toxic. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So you, you didn't go to Home Depot and look at all those little paint cards that they have on the wall and say, I want this shade of green, and they mix no it up with gallon. No gallon of green you took no. home. Nope. <laughs> wow. But the... Um, the green is a really interesting uh, sort of newcomer, and uh, and the turtles have designs on their backs. And are those designs any way related to the turtle themselves? I mean, do you put turtles turtle designs on turtles, or do you put other designs on the, turtles? What's neat is that when you actually look when you actually look at the turtle shells, you have different designs in them. And they all look like lifeline designs. So they're they're like fingerprints. They're unique. Pretty much, they're all they're unique. unique. Uh huh. And I heard you mention that uh, your Indian name is Yellow Rose. Yes. Well, you know, in New Mexico we have these wild roses, and they're either pink or yellow. That's what and my so, mother loved. Oh, uh, but the you know they the, there's a song about the yellow rose of Texas, but guess what? There are yellow roses, wild yellow roses in New Mexico too. And I think I'm talking to one of those wild yellow <laughs> roses right here. Uh, but uh, the. It, the, do you ever do families of turtles? Actually, well, have yes. Uh -huh. I've done I've done different types of turtles. You rarely see the small ones. I usually I love to do the small ones. They're fun, but they're actually harder than than the bigger ones because of the fact that when you're polishing, I usually take out a head or a tail or a leg, <laughs> <laughs> and they never. Some of them really never oh. make it. <laughs> oh, so the, so you can't sell an amputee, can you? <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. And and once you know you get to that stage where you're polishing and you've taken out a leg, uh, can you uh, we actually can you will. have a prosthetic <laughs> made for the the turtle? Can you reattach that leg? Band aid, I guess. Okay. Band with a band-aid. Oh, poor, no, poor before, turtles. Before, when, when I'm polishing it, we did not fire the piece mm -hmm. just yet. So what I'll do is I'll re-soak it and make it back into to another clay. And oh, so you just it give, up on, you of, give up on that turtle completely and he just goes back to the earth and starts all over again. There you go. He reincarnates himself. There you go. Many oh, times, many, many times many these little times. guys, they don't what's, last. What's the biggest one you've ever made? Oh, I've made a big turtle, maybe about as big as this piece. And, and that's what, about eight inches in diameter? Roughly. Oh man, yeah, that's that like was of, scary. That's like um, one of those big sea turtles. Yeah, the, see these the turtles that I do, they're scary because they're plates. You know, some people think some people think that they're full, but no, they're not actually full. They're actually like plates. They they're exactly like plates, and you can actually see in the inside. Uh huh. And so, oh, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, it, it's not one full heavy piece. This is actually all carved out and all one whole piece. It doesn't come off or anything like that. And it's not as thick as some of the pieces. Oh, I guess some of the pieces, like the pieces that we do, that we do deep carve. Mm -hmm. And so with... The turtles, when you're polishing them and you're, you're doing the firing process, then you'll end up losing some in the firing process. You'll hear a pop or something and we'll have so many pieces in, we won't know which one would actually make it. So, yeah. Well, Melanie, if you just tell me about one more of your turtles real quick why your turtles are your favorite? Yeah, which one do you like the best? <laughs> the one that I like the best would probably be the real ones that are alive. <laughs> you cannot really pick a nice piece that you make. You know, everything is your best. You know, it comes from your heart. 
and it comes from the earth. So, you know, each piece that does make it after the firing process is a special piece. So it's a little special Santa Clara piece wherever the turtle wants to go next once it leaves once it leaves its burrow or or their eggs. <laughs> yeah, well thank you so very much for that, Melanie. That was really quite informative and uh, we thank you for that. If you want to just head back over to the demonstration table, that would be awesome. The, the turtles are really fun. You know, I've heard from other people about, uh, from other Native Americans about turtles and how they are involved uh, or celebrated in the Native American culture. And that the turtle is, is sort of like Noah. Uh, when the, the turtle can live both on land and, on, and in the water, in the sea, and when the great flood came, humanity climbed on the turtle's back. And we hung out with the turtle for a long time. And when the, water, uh, the waters went down, the turtle dumped us off on dry land again. And, and here we are today. So uh, turtles are really very, very special in a lot of Native American cultures. So hey, Sammy, how you doing? Still hanging in there. You're still hanging in there. Tell us what you're up to. I saw you scraping the bottom while Melanie was talking. What was that all about? I was scraping it, making it more kind of rounder because it had the the bow, bow, the bow shape. So what I was doing was scraping it to make it more rounder with the knife. And so after that, then I, what I'm doing now is I'm cutting into my deep carve. Well, when you scrape, uh, does it make it smoother too, or yeah. is, is it just a shaping tool? It's just a shaping, and it makes it makes it um smoother. It's smoother. And yeah. Does it force air bubbles out if there might be any in there? Yeah, it should. Uh huh. And uh, when you polish it, uh, I mean, you're carving in now before you polish it, or before yes. you put slip on it. Yes. Yes. What we'll do is we'll carve it, let it dry. And what kind of a tool are you using? I'm using an X-Acto blade. Oh, uh -huh. it seems like X-Acto blades are really um, important with Pueblo pottery. Lots of people use them. Maybe we should have an X-Acto blade store in, in Santa Fe because uh, the, you go through so many of them, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I um, usually get the 100 count. That lasts oh. me three months. Well, if it's if the exacto blade is uh, a little dull, uh, will it drag and and do funny things to where you're trying to uh, etch into the surface? Oh yeah, yeah, it will. You can tell. Now, you are lining it off at the moment. Yeah, I'm What's lining the pot here. Yeah, and what, what, what's the next step? What I'll do next, after it's all aligned, what I'll do is I'll cut into it with the uh, screwdrivers and I'll pluck them, pluck it out. Uh -huh, mm. You scrape things out. So when, when does uh, polishing take place? After it's complete, when it's done and completely dry. And completely dry. Yeah. Oh, okay, so we won't see that part today. Yeah. Yeah, we, we will. Oh, because you brought one that's completely dry? Yes. Oh, that's good. That's I, um, good. Oh, good. We get to see everything. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, as everyone can imagine, I mean, Sammy's been working on that for a long time, and we didn't. The time hasn't uh, been included of going and uh, digging the clay, and cleaning the clay, and soaking the clay, and aging the clay, and mixing the clay, and coiling the clay and and uh, that. and drying it and scraping it and uh, all those kinds of things and uh, and now you know the part where um, where all the design work is done it is being done now yeah and then, you know you have to go for your horse manure your wood so it is really time consuming we have a question 
We actually have a couple of questions. So, um, what is the Tewa name for turtle? Oku. Can you say that again? Oku. Oku? Yeah. Oku. Oku. And the next one is, is, have you ever thought of using Dennis tools for your pot carving? <laughs> Apparently, Dennis will provide them for free. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Uh, used. 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 Uh -huh. Never thought of that. <laughs> people, um, yeah. people told me about them. And what's funny is when I do my etching, <laughs> my etch work, um, when I first started out, you know, you try to get the most comfortable too. And I'll get to that later. But um, I use just nothing but um, screwdrivers and stuff. Yeah. I'll get back to that question about dentist tools yeah. when she's polishing. Oh. Okay. And then we have another question from Jaren, and Jaren would like to know is, um, does the weather impact the pottery making process? What motivates you to continue to make pottery? Well, that's, that's two, two questions. separate questions. Yep. But does the weather impact? Yes, it sure does. We will not fire in the wind. We will not at fire at, when it snows, and we will not fire when it rains. So it has to be a nice day. And, you know, well, when it's windy, um, what happens is you can overcook your pot. And when it rains and the moisture is there, you'll smoke your pot. So you'll get this film on your pot, and so that's pretty much ruined. And when it's overcooked, um, what happens is when you're going to etch on your work, it's very hard. So yeah, no, we don't, it has to be nice weather in order f for us to do any firing. So if it is nice weather, but the humidity is really high, is that bad news also? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, because it's like, if it's, the smoke will stick to it. Well, aren't we lucky in New Mexico that we have lots and lots and lots of Beautiful sunny days, but don't tell anyone. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what? And you said also, if it's snowing, is is does the temperature outside make a difference? Oh yeah, because it's colder. So like when we fire up our pieces, um, we cook them a little longer, and do different um, use different types of wood. Um, yeah, and so. Well, Basically, like, it just has to be nice, nice weather. Nice weather. We have one potter uh, who I think is really quite clever. And what he does is he waits till wintertime. And he only makes small pieces in the wintertime. And um, he fires them in his fireplace. Yeah. And what he does is, I mean, it's warm in the house. And then the fire keeps the house warm, and uh, it makes it, you know, it, it's better than being outside, that's for sure. But he makes small pieces in the wintertime so that he can fire them in the fireplace inside the house. Yeah, you can fire in the wintertime, because I, like, I, we work year-round on pottery, but it just has to be nice. The ground it's can't be not wet. not snowing either. Yeah. Not yeah. snowing, not no wind, yeah. you know. Yeah. So we like like me and her. We work year round on pottery. Uh -huh. We fire year round. So it's just you just got to know how to fire, I guess. Mm -hmm. Both the summer and the winter. Yeah, we'll talk all about the fire when we when the what you you guys are doing gets yeah. a little closer to oh. the, the firing. We have another question. Well, I'm going to start with a comment from Josephine Naranjo. You two do both do uh, you 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 do. You both do beautiful work. You make a great team. The turtles are amazing and lovely. Oh, thank you. And then the next question is from Keith. And Keith would like to look, know, uh, are the small blue devices on the turtles paint, natural turquoise stone, or paste, or ground up turquoise, or what exactly are the stones? Some of them are Sleeping Beauty. And they're natural. They're all natural. So Sleeping Beauty, Kingsman, you know, you have different places um, where the stone comes from and I, I usually like working with uh, Sleeping Beauty because of the, the color it brings and then also Kingsman because it has kind of like a greenish type look into it mm -hmm. and then sometimes people will be natural so 
you know, gift them to me or whatnot. So once in a great while, I'll, I'll fiddle faddle with, you know, different, different other. I think the issues. reason that that question was asked is because uh, I've seen uh, over the last few years some of the jewelry that is uh, really not. Oh, the, like, what, the stuff. plastic that it's, they can burn? <laughs> it's a plastic that can be burned, right? So, or it, will, it um, uh, what they do is they uh, take the dust from cutting stones and mix it with resin, a polyurethane resin, and form it into stones and uh, make the, um, and call it turquoise, because effectively it's tur turquoise stone dust, but it's mixed with a plastic resin to hold it all together. But yours are real stones and oh uh, yes, Sleeping yes, yes. Beauty stones and Kingman. Oh yeah. yep, those are the ones I like yeah. to work with. Yeah. I hope that answers the question. Was there another one, Derek? So um, this turtle that I done, uh -huh. it's like really, you just did that, really right? super wet. So um, what I do is I usually let it dry. But I have a turtle that's dried already. And what I'll do now, once it's just that right, that right. Why did the you, right texture. Why did you give him a little uh, hop, skip, and a jump like that? So, so he, won't, he won't wobble away. So he won't <laughs> oh, take you off. Make sure yeah, that, I wanted to stay. <coughs> You might want to Stay make good. sure that there were no legs that had grown slightly longer there than the go. others. Uh -huh. There you go. So what I'm going to do now is carve the piece like Sammy's doing, just to carve the, the shell out. So. so you'll define where the shell is? Yes. Uh -huh. Darn, I should have thought about it because I have a succulent plant at home that is brown, dark brown. It is probably, oh, maybe eight, 10 inches in diameter and maybe an inch and a half high and it looks just like a turtle shell. Oh, cool. And it has a couple green things shooting out of it. <laughs> uh, but I didn't bring that today with a turtle. Shame on me. I'll have to be a little uh, more cognizant of what's going on around here, huh? I think one of the questions, uh, my one of the first questions, my oldest son commented on it. And then the last question, there was two questions that he, I think that's my youngest son. I got three boys. Out of the three boys, only one picked it up. And um, I was trying to have him come today, but he had to work. Oh, um, Justin, you know. Yeah, Justin. I know Justin. What does he do? He does the pottery. Uh huh. As a matter of fact, later on, I'm gonna have to. I had to borrow one of his pottery to demonstrate. Uh huh. Yeah, but <laughs> so I'll explain that one when we get there. Yeah, you can finish it for him. Well, yeah, that's probably what's gonna happen. <laughs> we, have, we have another question. Yeah, and it's for Sammy from Christian. And Christian would like to know, does the designs that you're carving into your pottery have any meaning or hold any important value? value? Yes, they all have meanings. All my pottery have meanings to them. They're all traditional designs, and all traditional designs have meanings to them. So tell, what is the meaning of this feather pattern that you're doing? Okay, like this, and now you can, I was trying to hurry up. But like this one here, now you have a feather design on top. Here, you have a water serpent, which is a water serpent's tongue. I didn't put the mouth yet, the eyes, but it's like a snake. We pray to this early in the morning before the sun comes up to bring us good luck throughout the whole day. And it ends with a tail here. So I was trying to get the front and the back done, but i still trying to carve it out. Do, do feathers have anything to do with your dances, or do they have to do with the animals that that grow them? Like well, the feather bird, design, like <laughs> the feather design. A lot of the natives put it on their on their pottery. You know, um, 
some of them are, they call them eagle feathers. A lot feathers. of them, I wouldn't call this an eagle feather. I mean, because we use so much feathers in our dances. And so, you know, it's just, just the feather design. Um, an all bird feather design. An all bird feather design. It's a parrot. It's a genetic it's bird. A dove. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's Santa Domingo, which is now uh, called Kiwa. Kiwa. Um, they have birds on their pots, and every Santa Domingo potter that comes in, I always say, "What bird is it?" And every single one of them says, tells me, "It's a Santa Domingo bird." <laughs> so they have they have their own bird species on their on their pottery and so are those those are generic feathers generic, generic. Fe feathers it's a universal feather yes <laughs> santa clara yeah that's right uh-huh yeah because like in our dances we um use many types you know like it's not just eagle it's could be eagle feather you know different turkey What's so, now, what happens with eagle feathers because eagle feathers eagles are endangered species um, are you allowed to uh, get have eagle feathers? Because I know that I'm not allowed to have eagle feathers. Yeah, it, being a native, yeah, you can um, have you you can have an eagle feather. I mean, you can have them because uh -huh. we use them in our traditional dances. Um, but yeah. Um, and are they used uh, as part of the of a of a? I don't want to call it a costume because it's not a costume. But you're, it, is it part of your traditional dress? Yes. Or do you, and do you use them in any other way in um, your dances? We just use them in our dances. I've seen women holding feathers. Yeah, we they use dance. that. And are those usually eagle feathers or can they be other bird feathers? They can be other bird feathers. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, with the um, Endangered Species Act, uh, a lot of the kachina carvers who before were using um, feathers, uh, some of them um, have turned to using turkey feathers as a substitute for eagle feathers. And um, the, the, you have to be really careful with the old kachinas because some of them will have not only the eagle feathers but the down. Of, of the baby birds yeah. uh, that are part of the traditional dress of these carved kachinas and um, they are, should not be um, you know, used in those kachinas or uh, sold with the, those um, feathers on them. But there's a, a huge endangered species list and it's interesting because not only are, is it an endangered birds, but it's all migratory birds as well. Yeah, like now that as, as like we're natives, um, we can't kill them, you know. What happens is like if they find them, the, what are they called, the rangers, like if they find them dead on the side of the road, uh -huh. what, what happens is um, you, you have they, to... They find, find a dead bird yeah. on the side of the road. And uh -huh. then they keep them, so you'll fill out a paper and... Um, if you get, you'll be on a waiting list to get them, and so that's how we get them nowadays, because uh -huh. we can't kill them. You know, that's um, like you said, it's an endangered bird, and so we get yeah. the ones that you know that are already gone. But we've, like with me, I've um had eagle feathers since I was small. From it was passed down from my grandfather, dad. Um, I call my grandfather dad because he raised me for mm -hmm. and so just yeah. like grandma's mom yeah yeah, yeah uh -huh, because they are your mom and dad yeah uh -huh. it's just a by, by a bloodline they happen to be a grandparent as well yeah so yeah we um that's how i got mine mm -hmm. and then the other feathers you know i get them here and there trade now where's where's sammy well, Sammy, were you and um, Chris and Vicky all raised by your grandma? No, it was just me. Just he, he you, was lucky adopted. you, huh? Yeah. What? Yeah. He was adopted when he was two days old, so that, that was really his mother and father. Uh huh. And so, Vic and Chris and Vic. Vic. Manuel. 
Because he has two brothers and one sister. But, but Manuel doesn't make pottery. Oh, no. No. No, because, you know, the other two siblings I know, but, uh, you know, usually when I they know one family member, or I get work. to know them all. <laughs> they, they do beautiful work. They yeah. do the deep carve and they do the bigger pieces. Yeah, yeah. Big, big, black piece, big black and red pieces from Santa Clara with the deep carving. But, you know, we have Vicki here. Uh, doing deep carving, and uh, and now you with the, the etching with the sgraffito, where you yeah. scratch into the surface, um, mainly so you know people get get a, a chance to see different styles from different pueblos, and uh, and you know the traditional things that are done in each one of those pueblos. And, you know some of those pueblos are they're their lands butt up to each other oh, yeah. and yet they do things that are very very different and have for hundreds and hundreds of years and occasionally there is um, someone in like in Santa Clara who works in the San Ildefonso style because they married into the, yeah. the Pueblo and you do the style that you know your mama or your grandma taught you oh yeah yeah, so like, like with me, like I was taught by my, my mom, um, like my sister, I have, um, see, like my birth mother is Bar Barbara Martinez. Uh -huh. Then my auntie is Glenda Naranjo and Frances Salazar. Uh -huh. So they took like my mother's water serpent or Avani, they call it. Um, they picked that up, but me, I went completely different yeah. on, from all my designs. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and also you're a guy. I mean, I think there's probably more of a an obligation uh, when things are passed down to uh, female after female, you know, grandma to daughter to to, to uh, uh, or grandma to mother to daughter. Yeah. Uh, that there's more of an obligation to continue on their uh, mama's tradition, and uh, but. Uh, men, because pottery making was basically women's work, yeah. I don't think there's, as much, there's isn't that strong, strong tie. Yeah. Uh, and we often see uh, the male in the, the family uh, stretching the boundaries. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now you put your pot away. How yeah. come? How come? Because, um, I don't know. Because I was thought she was waiting for me. Yeah, I actually am. To start the polishing process. I actually and am. And while she is polishing, I can explain the firing. Because I didn't know if he got, how far I got on the deep carving. But I have a... Uh, yeah, well, Sammy, you know what? We'd love to hear you talk about your pot. Sounds <laughs> Before good. you go. do that, that Sounds would be good. just great. And uh, so... <laughs> so before he goes, um, after we make them, we'll go ahead and carve them. And so I carved out the shell. So what I'll do next is I'll let it sit to dry, completely dry, dry. And so I have one here that I'll actually start watering. My goodness, you have a whole family. And then, yes. Yes, <laughs> I mean, we're being overrun with turtles. There you go. Hmm? A bale. And so, oh, it's a bale of turtles. A bale. A bale. bale like a bale of hay, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but where do they get these names? You know, like a pride of, of, of lions. And uh, I wonder who made up all these names along the way. Maybe the, whoever told us about a bale of turtles. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, whoever that was. Okay, go ahead. You guys can go check it out, and I'll go ahead and. Well, tell us Water. what you're what you're doing there. So once it's completely dry, I I usually don't sand them. Um, well, actually, I guess you could say I do. I use a sponge to sandpaper that I can get wet, and I'll end up um, a sponge sandpaper. Yeah, I don't know what's that. It's a sponge sandpaper. It just has a sponge in the back with a little oh, bit of sandpaper. Oh, 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 like you would use to clean the kitchen sink. There you go. There exactly. you go. <laughs> oh, okay. Or the better yet, the bathtub. Uh -huh. And then so what I do, I do have is just a regular t-shirt watering rag that uh -huh. I'll use to actually smooth out my, my turtle. 
So he's going to uh, uh, get a new look. Yes, he sure will. And, and when you sign your pots, Melanie, do you, when you sign the turtles, do you sign them on the inside of the shell? or Actually sign them underneath. In the, on the inside of the shell? Yeah. Uh-huh. Because I have seen people who make bears who sign them on the foot. Sometimes do he does. You do he that? Does his, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I, I well, brought, that's good. I brought a bear today. Well, then, oh. um, but this is one of my, I do a lot of them. Um, I like bears, mm -hmm. and so I am. Um, Oh, well, hang, hang on, Sammy, because we don't have a microphone on. Oh. So uh, we'll be able to talk to you about all of that later. And is it going to be you, just you and Sammy over there, Derek? Yes. Good, good. Oh, okay. Uh, and then you'll turn me off? <laughs> I don't know if that's possible to turn me off. <laughs> but, uh, and so you're cleaning up the inside of the turtle first? Yeah. I'm actually doing the legs first and the tail and the head mm -hmm. because this is kind of a tricky part when you're actually... Have you ever broken a leg oh, off? Oh, yeah, there? Is many that of the, them. the place where you would break it? The polishing is the place where I would break it. And on the polishing, if it breaks, then that's when it has to go back to whatever else it want it to be. Okay, so. And so the legs, the inner part, the underside. The underneath it, and then the top. It just smooths it out. I don't sand the head or anything like that. I just water it because of the fact that the turtle's neck isn't all that perfect anyway. Mm -hmm. And neither is the legs and stuff that he hides in it. Wow. Yeah, so. And so is there, when you're cleaning it up like that, is, are you using water with it? Because it looks like yeah. it's changing color. Yeah, I'm using the water. This uh -huh. is the dry part, and then uh -huh. this is actually the part that I'm smoothing here. And uh, are you uh, going to be carving it or etching it? I actually it already after carved this? it, but uh, what I'm going to do next is once I finish watering it, I'm going to finish watering it smooth, letting it sit to dry for a while. And then what I'm going to do next is I'll end up polishing the pieces. Great. Well, I am over here with Sammy right now in the yeah. display of uh, in the display of Sammy's work. And yeah. Sammy, what can you tell no, me about some of your pieces? Yeah. Well, much they're all pass. traditional design pottery. We have um, another hour and a half to go. I um, started off when I first started off doing the pottery. Um, I was doing um, on this type of work, like my etch work here. Mm -hmm. um, I would say. I would do wildlife, dancers, hummingbirds, until maybe like, um, I started in 90, so about 93 or 4, I tried traditional designs. So I ended up um, trying the traditional designs, and so like this base, little base here, would this one would have the feather design on top, the water serpent here, that goes all the way around. Then it ends with the tail here. Then you got your lifeline, and then your bear paws on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so the feather design is is a pretty it's it's a fun to to draw them out. I like doing the feather designs, and the feather designs you know like we a lot of the pueblos use this design. Um, we um, do it on all the potteries and stuff. And so like with this one here. I would call this a sun design. Oh, that's it, really cool, Sammy. So this is actually a Kiva with a mountain design, but I call it a sun design if you look at it. And this one also 
has the water serpent, has the water serpent's tongue, mm -hmm. the mouth, the eyes, and it goes all the way around. And it ends with the tail here. Then you got your lifeline, and then your main. What's the lifeline? The lifeline, I call it a lifeline that never ends on my pottery. And so it's just like a trail, and it just never ends. And then I got my bear paws on the bottom. And why do you put bear paws on your pieces? I guess that would be like kind of my trademark, I mm -hmm. guess. I really like the bear. Um, I try to put a bear in everything I, I do. A uh, bear paw in it, mostly all my pottery, should I say. Um, then I have like, um, let me see which other one. Like this one here, you know, this is, this is one that me and Melanie has done. And this one has a Cuba step design all the way on top. And I think she explained to you what the Cuba step meant. And so, and then you have the water serpent again. I put the water serpent in mostly all my pieces. So you have the water serpent's tongue, the mouth, the eyes, and so it'll go all the way around. Well, Sammy, you said a Kiva step. What's a Kiva? A Kiva usually is where the men gather. And it's we a have, building. It's a building. It's a building. And, and, and we, just, we just don't walk into it. We have to climb up and then climb down. So is it round? It's, most Kivas are round, but now, like, ours is square. It's, and can it, does it sit into the ground? No. Or ours is on is, top of the ground? It's on top of the ground. So, it, so it's a building with steps on the outside. Yeah. And, and step so you climb up, up the steps, and, and then, then you, and then, is that where the door is? Or yeah. is the door down below? The door is on top. The on door is on top. top. And then once you open that door, then you go back down, down. to the ground level. Yeah. And oh, so that's okay. what a Kiva step represents because uh -huh. you're climbing up and then climbing back down. Now, anybody else, can anybody else besides the men go in the Kiva? Well, we get the girls. That's where we practice, like for our dances and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, basically, most of the time it's for the men. And, uh -huh. um, yeah. And so what do men do in there? Well, we practice for her dances, like uh -huh. when we have feast days and stuff. And then that's mainly mainly it. You know, you do. Um, now that we have um, council rooms, because it used to be used for like men meeting, like uh -huh. for the council and so stuff. So when they would decide the the fate of of the pueblo and yeah. the, the activities and the and the structure and all those other uh, parts of the pueblo yes. that uh, because the men made all the decisions. Yes, yes. Do and they still make all the decisions? Yeah, pretty much, but pretty the much. women are now sneaking in. Uh, you know, uh -oh, uh -oh. Yeah. And so, you know, like, um, we now for that, we have a council room, like, in our facility mm -hmm. in the Pueblo. So it's like, a, you know, a boardroom. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I so, think the Kiva sounds much more interesting than sitting in a boardroom. Uh, yeah. I yeah. think I know why they call them boardrooms, because you sit in there and you're bored to death. Yep. Uh-huh. But, uh, and so the uh, Kiva is really basically for men. And but not outsiders. No outsiders. No, no it's all for and the no Pueblo other, men. Pu for, well, you mean Santa Clara Pueblo men? Well, all Pueblos have a Kiva, so you know, uh -huh. you know that. But it's all. someone who might be visiting from Acoma wouldn't be a man visiting from Acoma probably wouldn't be inside of a, a Santa Clara Kiva. Um, it happens, you know, relatives. If you're married into, you know, the uh -huh. into the Pueblo and you're a man from, say from Santo Domingo, you're married into a lady from Santa Clara, you can you ask it, permission, you, and if uh -huh. they give you the permission, you can go in. Okay, good, good, yeah. because those steps then, when you talk about Kiva steps, are the steps that are going up to the door of the Pueblo. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm sorry I interrupted, but I just wanted to clarify. Oh, yeah. I wanted to clarify that because, you know, we have a lot of people listening in from all, all parts of the country yeah, and even know. the world about uh, Kivas. So we have a question from the internet from Rainy, and Rainy would like to know how you get the two-toned on your piece. The two-toned? Um, this is actually in the firing. I will get there when we're in the firing, and I can explain that to her. And she can, um, if she can hold on for a couple of minutes, because she's going to be polishing. So I, I like to get that. I don't want, I don't like to skip 
Yeah, so what what we're try what you're trying to do, Sammy, but the, is you're trying to begin in the beginning all the way to the, the end. right from digging the clay all and the then go step the, by step that, until yes. you get to the, the firing process in the end. And, and Rainey, I hope that you'll stay tuned with us uh, so that you can find out about the of the firing because I'm sure Sammy will be able to explain that to you. And knowing Sammy, this is probably a little bit of his own secret. Yep. So maybe we'll hear a little bit of a secret. But it's maybe. all done in the firing. Yeah. You know, and uh -huh. uh, I can explain that to her. And and that's really unique. Yeah. Uh, having and this that one's two in the inside, as you can see. You know, there's oh, not God, very it's many. Gorgeous. There's not very many people that are. Um, polishing their pieces in the mm. inside and this is very hard. I love the way the light catches it. You can it's so reflective, you know, you could almost comb your hair yeah. by looking, at, yeah. looking inside your pot. And, and so you have a variety of shapes, yeah. Sammy. Uh, are there any shapes? I mean what shape do you what shape do you like to do the the most? I like what to do shape? the round ones. The round, the round ones? ones like uh -huh. this here, you know? Um, these are the ones I like to do. I, I just don't know why, but I like to do them. Um, and the feather, you have the feather design? Wedding vases, I like yeah. to do. Um, those are fun, but those are hard because, you know, when you're outlining the pot, your fingers have to outline in a certain, in a certain way. And those are hard, but, but I like to do them. I, I like, I mean, what we're not seeing on camera is uh, Sammy talking about the fact that you have to move your fingers in a certain way, and then his elbow yeah. goes up. Yeah. <laughs> so it seems like you're moving your whole arm in a certain way as well. The turtles, I, I like to do everything, you know, it's fun, it's challenging, it's... But but you the, know, something new that we, that we came up with is this green color, the two colors, me and Melanie. And so I like to, um, I like to do her turtles. Now, we had a question from Dan. Hi, Dan. I'm glad you tuned in again today. Uh, and I don't know if we're, we should ask Melanie this or Sammy this, but we'll start with Sammy. And if he gives a, if he gives a satisfactory answer, uh, that, but, but we'll ask Melanie also. Maybe it will be different. Who knows? Dan wanted to know if the green is painted on before the the green slip is painted on before the firing. Yes, it's done it before. It is. Yeah. And how? And when you do the reduction firing, does the the color comes out that green, it doesn't change because of the reduction. For firing. some odd reason, um, the green doesn't turn black like the red slip. Yeah. So, see with the red slip, it's uh -huh. black. Yeah. So, so, with the green, it's still green. Yeah. And so, there's some, some tricks that I do to make it a brighter green. I wish I would have brought one to show you how it looks, but it's, you can still see the green. Uh -huh. And so what I usually do is try to put like oil when I fire it, so it gets that brightness. And so, oh, so you cover the green during the firing, firing. Like, yeah. and you cover it with foil? Yeah, pretty Doesn't much. Doesn't the foil melt? No, no it doesn't. If you, if you flip it, if you, um, how you just fold it, if you fold it the size, uh -huh. you, can, you can play with it. Like um, how I learned how um, my, my middle son, his name is Justin Arano. He was doing, a, I, we didn't make this show, but he was doing a show with my sister in, um, in Tucson. And he was asking me, Dad, how could I make a snake with spots? And um, I told him, try for it, maybe it'll work. So I folded it for him. And one. this is aluminum foil? Aluminum foil. You know, foil. You know like, thick foil. yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. and, and he did a snake, and it just went like in a curve. And um, what he did was he put foil in different spots. And where he put the foil, he fired it, brought it out. Where he put the foil, it stayed red. Ooh. And so he then etched it. Then he got he got a first place trophy on, on, on that. I'm not sure, ribbon in um, Tucson at the Arizona State Museum. Uh -huh. And so he's the guy that, um, uh, my middle son is the only one that picked it up. He done some bobbleheads with like bear. He, he tries to duplicate my work. And um, he's about the only one that can almost duplicate my water serpent. Um, but um, yeah, he um, did a bobblehead bear and he placed 
another verse on that one. So well, the um, duplicating uh, is is not a bad word <laughs> if it's a family member who's duplicating. Right. If it's a neighbor that's down the you know the down the road, uh huh, and they're duplicating your work, then it's a bad word. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, gotcha. Gotcha. Wow. Well, Sammy, your pieces are really. Uh, quite wonderful and the, unique with that uh, sort of um, caramel colored rib ri ri rib. ribbon ar around the rim I mean they're really really very different yeah, and, you know. uh, and when we talk about the um, the firing process which will yep. come up relatively soon uh, then you can Tell us a little bit about that, oh, but, oh, that's but good. you don't have to give away all your secrets if you don't want to. That's okay, just that sounds fine. good. Because we want that person who's down the road not to know. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. Right. Uh -huh. You know, like with a dream, you know, for the past 15 years, and I saw it from uh, uh, some people from San Jose. So, well, know. Russell Sanchez does green, mm -hmm. and so does Eric Fender. Yeah, and you know, uh -huh. other, um, I got we I think her name is. Um, she did green pots too. Who? Who's that? Sepe. 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 Yeah, uh -huh. I think she. Yep. I asked her, you know, so where do you get this green from? It's pretty neat, you know. And you know, a lot of artists won't give up their their information on a lot yeah. of things, you know. And so finally, you know, how we got the green, um, a guy from Zuni, you know, brought brought some in powder form. And so he said he dug, he digs all that up. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's where we get our green from, from a guy from Zuni. Well, it's next week, nice. yeah, next week we're going to have a Zuni potter here, Carlos Laate. Oh, wow. And he is, uh, he doesn't do any green, but um, maybe there mm. is uh, some of that same clay or okay. sand or, or mineral. Uh, that gives that green, and he might know something about it yeah. then. But, you know, earlier we weren't sure whether that green was a commercial endeavor or a natural one, and now we know it's natural. It's natural. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We even polish it. We yeah. even have, we didn't oh, even polish, but yeah. we, we've it's done some polish. It's difficult to polish it. Yeah, it's more uh -huh. harder. I know, so right, right. Russell's are really skilled at polishing mm -hmm. the green, and I, I haven't seen any of Eric Fender's that have polished green on it, but he does do a combination of black and green. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the gals at, uh, at Akama on some of their seed pots, there's a little bit of green, mm. but maybe the, the mineral that um, you're using is, is more abundant where you are than where they are because Akama Pueblo but, is couple hours drive away yeah and so like a lot of the people that get it don't tell you i mean they yeah, just won't tell it well yeah. can you blame them you know I mean, I guess, yeah. yeah anyway um we are going to uh talk to melanie a little bit more but uh sammy thank you for You're sharing welcome. all of your uh, uh information here they're really yeah. really quite wonderful and and incredibly delicate and uh, and time consuming and time <laughs> consuming, like that that big bowl that you did, sitting there. I know you didn't do it uh, all, you know, all at one time. All at one time. But if you could guess, how long did it take for you to etch those those pieces? That one, I didn't do it every day. I did it maybe when I had time. So if I would have done it every day, that would have um, took me about a month and a half, every day. And so every I- Every day? If I did it from 40 seven- 40 hours a week? Yeah, um, oh, no five, longer. 40 hours, that's eight hours a day. No, five days a week, yeah. that's 40 hours a week. And yeah. you said a month? That's 160 hours right there. Yeah, that's how long it would uh -huh. take. Um, but I took me three months to finish because I was, Doing this and doing smaller pieces uh -huh. at one time? Yeah. yeah. Well, I can imagine because uh, after a while you get to the point where uh, it isn't fun to go back to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, you get tired, so you, you do something else. Yeah, and so this way you can break it up with, with other activities so that when you do get back to it, this excitement is still there. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, what, yeah. I do, what I do now is, you know, I... I um, 
if I get tired of working on pottery, I'll go to painting, you know. And so. Okay, so, uh, Sammy, um, what is your favorite design to draw? My favorite design to draw is probably the Avanu, the water serpent. Mm -hmm. I like to draw that. I guess everything is bear paw, mm -hmm. feather. I mean, I, I'll say the water serpent. Yeah. Uh, Vanya. Um, but the feather design is challenging because each feather is individually detailed. Mm -hmm. um, that's mainly it, you know. And, and so uh, in your feathers, right, you, you do all these other little designs that are in the feathers. Do yeah. those, uh, does any of those have meaning? Pretty much not really. It's just to bring it out more. Okay. Well, thank you very, very, very much, Sammy. And yeah. so we are going to take it back over to Andrea real quick. Um, give me one second, and I'll let me change the cameras up. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. Well, what I'm going to tell everybody about now for a few minutes um, is about what's coming up in the next week, the last week of um, these videos. Uh, demonstrations and conversations with potters on Tuesday and we do them Tuesday through Friday and this will be of course like I said excuse me Tuesday through Saturday got all my days mixed up but um, on Tuesday we will have Candelario Suazo and is this camera on so I can show people yes. oh good this is Candelario Suazo's work who also does etching and uh, scraffito work, and who is from Santa Clara, Pueblo. She does a lot of miniatures, too, if there are miniature collectors out there. And uh, what she shows on her pots uh, usually uh, is wildlife, butterflies and hummingbirds and uh, things that go bump in the night. And... Then on Wednesday, oh, and she'll be here from 11 to 4 on next Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, we have Angie Yazi. Angie is from Taos, Pueblo. And what I'm going to do on Wednesday is I'm going to bring my kitchen scale because I want to make sure that you understand what the weight of the pot is. This, this piece of pottery is so light. You, you know, styrofoam isn't any lighter than this. A takeout thing from the restaurant with your food in it, the takeout carton weighs more than Angie's pieces of pottery. And maybe she will get, fill us in with all of the secrets of uh, how uh, they are um, made. And then on Thursday, we've got a double header on Thursday. Two more of the Lewis girls. Diane Lewis, who makes seed pots, these lovely little seed pots, some with animals, some with lots and lots of geometric designs. And her sister was here yesterday, Carolyn Concho. The Lewis girls um, are also famous, and they all do such great work that we decided to let to have them give their own, they, you know, give them their own day. And along with uh, Diane is her sister, Judy, Judy Lewis, who does wonderful, wonderful stories, storytellers. And uh, we put Diane and Judy together because, you know, Marilyn and Carolyn and Rebecca, somehow, I don't know why, I seem to know them uh, a whole lot better. And each one of them is a real master artist in their own right. And since I know Judy and Diane a little less than I knew the two of them, we figured that uh, the two of them together could be lots of fun. Then, on Carlos, we have Carlos Laate on Friday from Zuni Pueblo, a very traditional Zuni Pueblo uh, piece of pottery with the red background. Oftentimes they have a white background but with the deer, with the heart line, and always this big medallion. But Carlos will be here. He's a very lovely, sweet guy and does very nice work. And then, at th bringing up the rear, 
so to speak, although I'm not so sure Marilyn would like me saying that, uh, is Marilyn Ray. And let me just grab this storyteller. She is a the master storyteller maker that is alive today. These incredible storytellers with all the fun ladybugs and, and oftentimes they're butterflies and birds and always, always there's a piece of pottery that the storyteller is holding. And you know, some people say storyteller dolls. Well, they're not dolls, they're not playthings. They are um, effigy figures of grandparents. Grandparents who are telling their grandchildren the history and the language of the culture. But Maryland's storytellers are really fun and delightful and uh, really quite, quite wonderful. So, and that will sum up our uh, grouping of 20 conversations and demonstrations and sales of uh, Potter's works. Uh, we have had so many requests for us to continue on doing this. And right now, because of the pandemic, it was not appropriate for us to have any Hobie Potters or Navajo Potters here. But once uh, these things have passed, then uh, I'm sure we'll have many of them. And we are going to continue on. Even the Potters have called and said, oh, can I do that too? And so... Uh, we'll have a little time to recover from all of this, and then we'll begin again, you know, maybe one a week. We haven't really decided on how we're going to do it at this point, but um, uh, just stay tuned, and, and, and if you're on our email list, uh, do that. And for the ones that we've done before, they, you, they can be viewed at on YouTube, on our channel, if you go to youtube.com, search for Andrea Fisher Fine Pottery, and all of the videos will come up. We would really appreciate it if you would subscribe, and also if you would tell you, your friends. We had the most wonderful thing happen yesterday. Um, a lady called, one of the operators that are standing by, uh, she called in yesterday and she, um, she said that her four-year-old woke up in the morning and said to her, Mommy, is it pottery day again today? And uh, uh, that was the greatest compliment of all, that, that we can satisfy an adult and we can keep a four-year-old's attention. So uh, thank you, whoever you are, you sweet little four-year-old. And uh, again, you can, you can see all the uh, ones that we've done before on that YouTube channel. And so are, now we, are we now ready to go back to Sammy? And, yes, we are. Oh, good, good. So what's going on over there, you guys? Now, she's going to um, demonstrate the polishing process. Then we're going to go into the firing. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so after I watered the turtle. You watered, watered the turtle? Is that, like water, is that like watering the lawn? Yeah, <laughs> just use a cloth and then you water it smooth. And uh -huh. what I'll do is um, I'll wait for it to completely dry. And then um, I have one that's already completely dried. So what I'll do is I'll put a first coat of the paint onto the turtle now. And he can explain mm -hmm. how we get the paint. And for, the, for those of you out there, you know, the reason that we're doing all these, because this is... Sammy and uh, Melanie's uh, tourist season, Indian market, all rolled into one. And all the pieces that we have for sale benefit them. And uh, you can view all of them on our website at www.andreafisherpottery.com. Uh, for Melanie's turtles, go to artist, then the letter G, and look for Melanie Gutierrez. They'll come up with the most expensive one first and scrolling down to the least expensive. For Sammy, if you go again to our website, then click on artists, and then um, uh, scroll down from the most expensive to the least expensive, you can contact us by phone, you can contact us by email, and um, all of their pieces are for sale and in advance Thank you very much. 
Okay, what you got there, lady? She's going to get started on polishing with the yeah. red slip. Um, the red clay, we usually get in another Pueblo. Um, we usually get it in um, either Hamas or we'll get it around the Colchiti area. And, um, this one our, I got from um, my nephew. He's half, his grand, grandparent is from Cochiti Pueblo. Oh, so so you, just, this one. you just can't walk into Cochiti Pueblo and start digging somewhere. No. no. You have to have a connection. Permission. Yeah, you have to have yeah. permission. And it, it's who you know, not what you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. And this is how like our clay looks, our red slip looks. And it looks almost exactly like our clay that we make our pottery with. And so what we'll do with this is the same thing, you know, let the rain hit it. And once it melts, you can soak it in water. Then what we'll do is we'll screen it, same as the clay, same. you know. And is it clay? It's, I guess you could say, really watered down clay, yeah. And it's uh, full of iron oxide, maybe? Yeah. It's a nice red, that red iron, iron. color that you see. Uh, well, if anybody's ever gone to Sedona, the whole place is like a giant magnet because it's all red, red clay, red iron oxide everywhere. Yeah, and it, um, yeah, and so yeah, we'll, we'll um, do that. We'll soak it and make a paint out of it. And she'll put about maybe four or five layers of that, depending on how thick and thin the pot is. And um, then we'll, she'll start polishing. If it's too thin, what happens? Sometimes you can break a foot off. Or sometimes no, no, I mean the, the slip. If the slip is too thin, you said four or five coats. If it's too thin, then it, does what, anything happen? What I meant by that is like if the pot's like um, too too thin, sometimes it's because the because the she paint. Meant clay. I think I mean you were talking about the paint. Yeah, How I was talking. Coats? Yeah, about it, the paint. It doesn't really matter because with our clay, you can just use water and and polish it on oh. as well if you want it the brown tan uh -huh. color. Um, or you can put a couple of coats of the red for the top layer. Because when we're actually scratching into it, you're going to actually see the original color of our original clay uh -huh. that I was using. If, if you put the slip on too thick, what ha does anything happen? When you're polishing it, I mean, Usually does, it, might crack. does it crack? It, it like little, polishing. little cracks. It could have polishing, little polishing cracks. Uh huh. And so you really have to know what you're doing. Yeah. Pretty Practice. Much, pretty much, yes. Uh, sorry if I'm going too fast. I, <laughs> I make it, um, it's a lot easier to do it in sections, but um, it's just for, you know, the viewers to actually see what we're really doing uh -huh. and, and what it does take. You know, it does take a lot of time. And like with our carving or our etching, you know, we're, we're used to actually doing the pottery and so if something cracks or breaks or if we use something out of the ordinary, you know, we can always, you know, turn it back to earth and remake something else mm -hmm. out of it. And so usually, uh, but well, they do, they do have polishing cracks when you actually do um, put too much on mm -hmm. it. Or even though if you have too much clay and you don't have a good mixture, this is the time when the pottery will actually show up that it, it'll either crack or, it, you know, it can't have too much clay or it can't have too much white sand. And so it just kind of has to be just right. Just right. And yeah. that's all by feel. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because you'll pay for it in the polishing process or in the firing process. Yeah. Especially if you're not pack, uh, packing your clay and trying to get all the air bubbles out. Well, the tragedy is that when it happens in the firing process, you've basically done just about everything except maybe glue those stones in and that uh, uh, the, the piece is gone, it's ruined. All we, that work we, and then you're done. We can't yeah. even save them either. We can't, no. you know, turn them back to, you know, melt them into earth. Yeah, we have a question. We do, from Charles in Fort Collins. Good to see you both again. Sammy, could you tell me your kids' names? My oldest is Jordan Naranjo, my middle is Justin Naranjo, and my youngest is Jaren Naranjo. So the J words, huh? The J. So you only got as far in the baby book name to the J's, huh? Uh, take this. Their middle <laughs> names are J. Uh, so who's JJ? JJ, all of them. All of them are JJ. Oh, that could make life really exciting. The oldest is Jordan Jerome. The middle is Justin Jalen. And the uh, last is uh, Jaren 
um, Jerry and Jay. Oh, yeah, oh, oh my goodness. I mean, it's, uh, you know, that, that's what, six seasons of hurricanes yeah. uh, naming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Melody, we've talked a, a, a bit about Sammy's family, his boys, and his adoptive grandma who taught him how to make pots, and his brothers and sisters, but we haven't talked about your family at all. Uh, while you, is it possible while you're putting this lip on and while you're polishing, you can tell us some things about your family? Yes. <laughs> yes, uh-oh, is this good yes or bad yes? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, I learned pottery through, actually, you know, I didn't take it serious till 05 when, you know, we collaborated together. But I grew up around pottery. My grandparents and my great grandparents and my mother did pottery. And so. And their names? My grandparents, well, my mother is Donica Terrace and she had recently passed away last year. Mm -hmm. And so um, she actually gave me some of the stones. And on my mom's side, um, my, her grandma was Lagoria Tafoya. Uh -huh. And so. Um, she did pottery, she taught my mom, and I did not, I didn't really know until my, when my aunt passed away, her name was Aunt Sue, and she told me about her mom because Lagoria was her, her Lagoria was her mother, and so she had told me that, I guess Lagoria would go out and she had uh, videos and was trying to, you know, do the same thing that you guys are doing. And so it interests me and a lot. And how, how long ago was that? This was two, three years ago. Uh-huh. This was about three years ago. No, no, no. Um, my mom passed away last year, and so did my aunt. And so it was like maybe about five years uh -huh. before we started talking, and so, with the polishing stones that I do have, they come from my, a couple of them come from my mother and um, about maybe, I'll say 10 years ago, my aunt, uh, my, my, my dad's, Joe Gutierrez's sister, Sandra Swazo, she actually, I talked to her and her mom did pottery. Her mom and dad did pottery and so the stones that I actually use come from my dad's side of the family and my mom's side of the family. So my mom is half San Alfonso, and so my grandpa is from Santa Clara, and my other, my dad's side is from Santa Clara. It's kind of confusing, but they also did pottery, and some of the stones were passed down, and so they were saying that my their my grandparents' mom's mom used the stones. So that's how the stones were, I guess, passed down. And so like now with some of the stones that we do have and other people like my aunties I hear, you know, they, um, they're two sisters. And when they're, pol when they're about to polish, when they're about to polish the pieces, they share their stones. So one will polish one week, and then if the other one needs it, then they'll trade and pick up their mom's stones and polish the next week. Uh -huh. And so it's pretty interesting and neat. Well, you know, polishing stones are real important because that really, uh, along with your skill, determines uh, how well your pots are polished. And um, that's really a way of judging quality on how, how well the pieces are polished. And of course, you know, if they belong to their mom, that's a way of reconnecting with her every time you use those polishing stones. Yeah. I am um, kind of deterred away talking about my family because I just recently lost my sister last month. Oh. We're sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank oh. you. But you can go ahead and um, explain the thing. I just did. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Do you have other other sisters or brothers? Yeah, I have um, a sister, um, Paula, and then um, my brother, Joseph, 
Do either it, of them make pottery? Um, no. That's the funny thing about that. My, on both my parents' side, see what I had done, was I'm polishing now. Uh-huh. And so I had um, picked up a little bit of the paint on my stone, so it kind of looks like it chipped it. Uh -huh. So while it's still wet, I have to repair it. And if I don't hurry, it's going to dry on me. So when that happens, I'll just sit here, rewater it again, let it dry, and then go back over it again. <laughs> yeah. See, it's doing the same thing to me now. I'll leave it here. It might be. Well, maybe that's a place for a design. Right? <laughs> mm. Yeah. But. So what are you doing there, Sammy? I'm still carving this pot. I'm still. So you're kind of cleaning out the carving a little? Yeah. But I'm not, um, you this still This is what have, um, happens when the air's not right in here. <laughs> it's actually drying on me, and I'm actually chipping the paint off. So uh -oh. now what I'm going to have to do is rewater the whole turtle, let it sit to dry, and uh -huh. then start all start over again. Start all over again. And so sometimes, you know, that happens when you're... Did the camera see when you're working? where it was stripping off? Um, I'm not sure. Well, maybe Melanie can just move it in. You can right actually in. see it. You'll be able to see it. You can, um, Hold it right where you were polishing. actually, right here, like right here, closer to you. Closer to oh, you oh, 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 yeah. sorry. So it's actually right here. And so now, since, um, it's already drying, I don't know if it's the air in here or what, but I'm going to actually rewater it and then start all over again. This is sometimes what pretty much happens, actually not sometimes, it always happens depending on how you... So do you have to, to take that slip off? Oh yeah, I have, yeah. To, take, I have to take it off um, to even out again. So what I'll do is I'll just rewater it and then let it sit there and let it dry again. So how many times do you have to rewater it, so to speak? Uh, if I don't want no lines, if I don't want it um, to have anything shown or whatnot, then <sighs> if I'm lucky, I can only have to do it just once. <laughs> and if you're unlucky? If I'm unlucky, I can do it like three times or sometimes I just have to sit down and quit because my... The, the pottery tells you when to work, you yeah. know, you don't, you don't tell the pottery, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to work on you and you're going to be this way. <laughs> it does, does the pot They have their own lives, you know, yeah. and they, they do what they want. And does the pottery get particularly anxious when you have a show coming up and you need a bunch of pieces <laughs> and, uh, you know, That's things. the fun part. That's yeah. the fun part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And the pot I think said, that's the best. Well, you know, you're not going to rush me. And maybe you should have started two weeks ago instead of waiting <laughs> yeah. for the last minute. Yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's the fun part about that. You know, you're working and you can sit there, mess around, do what you're going to do. But then the potter is like, uh-uh, you're not going to, you're not working today. It's not polishing or... <laughs> Even when you're making, that tends to happen as well. Well, do you have any pieces that have been polished that you are going to uh, do any design work on? Did you bring any of those? We have... Um, no, we don't have no carved ones. We don't have no carved mm -mm. pieces. But we have this piece that's already um, been polished. Uh-huh. And so what we'll do is it's actually a bowl. Yeah. And so you are and it had a feather design in it. And I like uh -huh. to show this one because when you're working and you finish polishing a piece, uh -huh. you have to be careful because the oils on your fingers could, if you're touching it wrong, they can leave a mark or they can actually damage a portion of the piece. And this is before and when it's fired, it's before it's fired. So this is exactly how the pieces look when we're polishing. So sometimes when we're polishing 
or polishing the whole piece. And once we're finished polishing, then what we'll do is uh, we'll let it sit to dry and then we'll get, I use an X-Acto blade and different size screwdrivers. So what we'll do is when we're polishing, it, it closes up the seam in there. And so what we'll do next is we'll, we'll actually scrape the inside and we scrape it clean. And so... So the pot was carved first and then polish afterwards. Made with the with the slip with the slip. Yeah. Uh, first you painted on the slip the watery red clay and you polished it with a river stone and some of the red got into where you had carved. Yes. And what you're doing is cleaning that red We're out. We're cleaning now. the red out. Uh-huh. And with Santa Clara pottery, when well, you're actually cleaning the red out and you know Santa Clara pottery is probably the thickest pottery around because of the fact that, you know, we do deep carved our pieces. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when we're actually scraping and cleaning inside the piece, we end up going through. Mm -hmm. So on some of the pieces, you can go through your whole pot. Oh, wow. Bam, there it goes. And there it goes. <laughs> and back it, to You mother. can leave it like that and take it out and put a candle in it or fix it if you want it. Yeah. <laughs> but no, usually, you know, I like to bring this but it's to not. Show. Yeah, but it's not been fired yet. It's not. It okay. hasn't been fired yet. So in other words, what you could do is pound the heck out of it and let Turn it, it soak in the water and, and become clay again. There you and go. Start all over. Yes, But exactly. once it's been fired, that's it. I mean... It doesn't go back to the no, earth, no, except it maybe in the form of pottery shards that will take thousands of years to disintegrate. It goes on your shelf. Yeah, it goes <laughs> on your shelf, right? With, with the hole to you the wall, right? And so the good side is, is showing. Yep, you glue uh, it up. I was laughing because I collect a lot of my relatives' work, and all the ones I collect, there's not one that's a good piece there. Yeah. So there's always a crack, you know. Yeah, well, you know, a friend of mine called me, and, and because in one of the videos we had, um, one of the potters uh, saw a piece of her grandmother's work here, and uh, it was the one about Rebecca Lucario, and I'd rather not explain a lot about it, but if anyone out there uh, wants to watch a really special one, that's a really special one to watch because something something so wonderful happened in that video that it was the a te it was a testament to how how human beings can be so kind to each other i mean it was really really amazing but a friend of mine said well she was happy to get her grandmother's pot doesn't she have a her grandmother's pots well the answer was no and the reason is that you guys do this for a living and uh, you uh, use those pieces of pottery as part of your religion to construct. But once you construct them, then you're willing to sell them because you can trade those pots for the other things that you need in life. Uh, and, um, you know, like you can put gas in the car and food on the table and, and yep. those kinds of things. Exactly. And so people don't tend to keep their own. And if they don't keep their own, they have nothing to pass down to their children. And so you're really not collectors. And usually the things that are kept at home are the ones that you can't sell because they're damaged in some way. Yeah. Yeah, and where the, the when you fired it, where the chunk came out, yeah. well, the chunk goes... The missing chunk goes up against the wall, and the, the nice part of the pot gets shown to the public. And do you, 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 do you have a collection of your own work at home, Melanie? Yes, we do. We, we you do? A, yeah. Well, the they're all broken. <laughs> they're all broken. <laughs> there you go. Oh, my point. wrong with them, but we sure have a collection. Yeah, I have a can collection. Can't afford, can afford the ones that are nice. <laughs> yeah, the ones that are nice you sell. And, and we you keep know, the ones with character. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can, oh, that's the word, character. So character and broken are like synonymous. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe... Uh, we should talk a little bit about the firing process. Okay. 
Well, she was polishing. Um, huh. Yep, yeah, I was polishing, but um, our turtle's out there to get it dry a little bit. So yeah, I'll come I'll back in a little you, bit. You put it outside the front door. Yeah. What if it What if it runs away, away from from with one? It's a homing turtle and wants <laughs> to go back to Santa Clara Pueblo. Then what? <laughs> I feel sorry for the person, person that, that took it. it. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm <laughs> well, for sure, no, it won't make it home. <laughs> yeah, it won't make it, it home back to, to Earth. <laughs> right. yep. It's a homing turtle. <laughs> okay, so okay. You, your, your pot is all polished. It's all etched. It's all ready to rock and roll. Yeah, it uh, it's, it's ready to go through. through. It's done. And it's ready to go through probably the most dangerous part of the process. And what Sammy did, in lieu of building a fire inside the gallery and smoking, setting off the smoke alarms, although I'm sure we could set off the smoke alarms with the smoke that I can see outside. Uh, oh, that I'm fire that must ready. be really going to town. But um, we couldn't do a firing inside the gallery. So it, Sammy and, and Melanie were kind enough to bring a whole bunch of pictures of the firing process which is really cool. So when it's time to fire, what do you need? What kind of stuff do you need to make it happen? Wood? You need wood? Yeah, we need wood and... Horse manure. And horse, horse manure. manure. Slabs. Slabs Fish of what? Cans. What? And what? Metal tin. Vegetable cans? Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> tin. Hopefully I'm ready. All right. Yeah, there we go. Here we go. Um, you know. So I may ask you questions along the way, Sam, okay. so it's Sounds all good. nice and clear. Okay. Well, this was a quick firing that we did. Um, it was, uh, I think it was about to rain. And, well, this is how we fire. And this is how the pot looks. It's a reddish color here and so this is how a deep carb would look but if it was plain it would be plain and so what we how we set up what we'll do is we'll set up four vegetable cans on the ground and we'll use wet um, wood chips any kind of wood chips we use in the summer I use pine in the winter I use cedar and what, and kind, then, um, what kind of vegetables um, it don't matter as long as they're vegetable this one cans. This looks like corn. Can yeah. corn. <laughs> okay, can corn. There we go. Beans. Yeah. Uh -huh. Some Popeye can. And oh, so, yeah. what, so what we'll do is with the, with the, um, with the veg. We'll use a. What we'll do is we'll, for our box tin. What I use is a barbecue grill, and with that, what I'll do is I'll put the barbecue barbecue grill on top of the cans so it'll burn on the bottom. Then what I'll do is I'll put the pot inside of the box tin. This one, I didn't have time. I, I couldn't um, put a metal sheet in the bottom. I'll explain the metal sheet in a while. I'll um, explain the metal sheet in a bit. But it was, I think it was about to either rain or something like that. So what we did was we put, put our pots in the box tin and put, put Try not to have the pottery touch. And after that, what we'll do is we'll put a lid over it. If they do touch each other, what happens? They stay red wherever they're touching. Oh, and okay. so, so that the reduction part. You can do it intentionally yeah. if yeah. you want We to. do that a lot. We do, yeah, I do uh -huh. that a lot with the turtles and stuff. You uh -huh. can actually put them together and whatever pottery is touching. That little area will actually stay the red. little bit of the red. That red, red color. color. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. for was it Robin who had asked that question about how do you get the the edge, the um, the red parts in the pots? That's one way of doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so what what, what I do is I put the lid and then I put wood bark around the whole box and on top and uh, around the whole box and on top. And what I'll do is we'll burn it up. We'll burn our pots up for probably maybe about 30, 30 minutes, depending on the season also. So what we'll do is we'll burn it up. And then when the time's up, what we'll do is we'll add more horse manure and leave the how horse. Do you, how do you know when it's the right time to add the horse manure? Um, 
I usually time it, or sometimes if the... You actually... Well, I wish you could time it, but the top of the firing yeah. wood and the bottom of the tin, just looking at the way it is and how red it is and how much has gone, um, turned into ash, yeah. is actually time. So once it turns the time of the ash and, and the look of it, then yeah. that's when we're going to so, add the So on. you're waiting for the ash to... You're waiting for the bark to... Burn so that it's turning to ash, and, and you're looking at the pot, pot, and you're looking at the color of the pot, of the tin, of the metal tin, of inside. the metal tin mm. to see what color mm. it is. Yes. Some people use melt crates, or some people, some people use melt crates, and they'll put different tins around the the uh -huh. thing. And but like with me, I try to find it the easier way. So you don't have a thermometer stuck in there <laughs> no. to know what the, and what, what do you think the temperature is roughly? How about maybe 13 to 1500 degrees maybe? Uh -huh. I'm not too really sure. Really hot. It yeah, does. it's hot. Really hot. Yeah, that's a. Don't melt, it's not hot enough to melt the tin though. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's not too, too hot. <laughs> well, but it does get hot. <laughs> well, considering you're 98.6 and if that, 1300 temperature thing touches your skin it's, oh, yeah. it's yeah. really going to burn that tin does glow you know? uh -huh. it does glow yeah. and so it's it, again it's touch and sight and using instincts so, rather yeah. than mechanical things yeah you if you've been doing it for a long time you already know you know uh-huh and so same and that, like with when you change from summer to winter from winter to summer i mm -hmm. mean like I said earlier, you know, the wood in the wintertime, I use cedar because it burns hotter. Hotter. The summer, I use pine because it doesn't burn too hot. Because mm -hmm. in the summer, you don't want your pottery to burn real hot because it overcooks. Yeah. And so that's one and of the And if it overcooks, it loses its shine? It, it yeah. It's like a gun gray. Good. Yeah, gun gray. I personally think some of them look pretty cool because yeah. they're like a real metallic grayish Type color. Gun metal. Yeah, gun, gun gray, there metal. you go. Yeah. Yeah. There uh -huh. you go. yeah. And you know, it's an accident of overfiring, but it's really hard to control. Yeah. And so sometimes you'll get two a, people, you know, they don't they won't sell their work like that. It's pretty much ruined as well and another yeah. kept art. Uh -huh. And, so and like, how long does it take from the time you light the match for it to get up to that twelve hundred degrees till about it's like thirty minutes, like 30 I said. Minutes. I say twenty five uh -huh. to thirty minutes. And yeah. so while it's burning at a time, or the, when it's time to put the horse manure, we'll throw horse manure on it while it's still burning. We'll actually shovel it on and... and yeah, we'll shovel it. on the horse manure and to just keep all the smoke in. And what the horse manure does is it turns your pot black. Yeah, well it burns we and it course. sucks out the oxygen yeah. out of the clay and a chemical reaction takes place. Yeah. And uh, it's not as though you could just... Um, take a piece of pottery that we have in the gallery and shovel some horse manure on it yeah. and it would turn black. Yeah. Uh, it has to be in the fire and it has to burn and, and do that. So once we do that, then we'll, we'll um, put, leave the horse manure on for about an hour to hour and a half. And then when the time's up, what I'll do is I'll take the wood, the horse manure, the lid off. And this is what, what I'll come up with. Can that, you use that horse manure since it doesn't burn? All the way through, can you use it again? Yeah, I use it. Yeah. I, we use it over and over. Uh huh. And so. And the horse manure is is ground up. It's not. It's you know. stomped on. Yeah. 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 She stomps on it. She stomps <laughs> on it. So I <laughs> want out the balls. <laughs> you know, crush the balls. Yeah. Well, those are incense of lead. And, those and are very dangerous. You're around all this stuff when when you're done firing. Um, how do you smell? Like Where's money. The money. <laughs> That's the best smell in the world. Yeah. Ah, I love it. I love it. You smell like money. That's our um. That's our new um cologne scent. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. Yeah. There you go. But yeah, and so we'll take the wood, the horse manure, and that's how the pieces come out. And so what we'll do is we'll let them just cool down. And how long does that take? The cooling down could take about an hour, I would say. But because uh -huh. like I said, depending on the season, summer takes longer, winter it's shorter because it's colder. Yeah. And so once it's cooled down, then you just wipe them and. And like, these pieces are actually the ones we have a couple of them up there from from this picture. Oh. So oh, actually, nice. 
actually like the one I was talking to you about, you're asking about the black on the turtle. See the green, it stays green. You can yeah. actually yeah, well, that was Dan's question. He wanted to know if that yeah. green, what happens to that green it's, when it's you're doing that whatever. reduction firing or you're yeah. reducing yeah. the amount of oxygen. Yeah. And it just stays green. Yeah, it keeps the same color. Yeah. Huh. And so there you go. You can lift that one off. Yeah, so that's how that one would. would. Oh. <laughs> And that's how it's fired. And does, for does anybody else at Santa Clara do green on their pots? Uh, there used to be a girl by the name of um. Cause Quay, I, hmm? I think Quay did some. She passed away. Quay Gutierrez. I don't know if that's her real name. Can you get the turtle yeah. now? Huh? Yeah. Well, the one outside. Because I don't know of anybody who does green at Santa Clara. I know that at San Ildefonso, there are a couple of people, that do but uh, not at, not, not in at Santa, Clara. Santa Clara. So you were, you were trendsetters. I guess, yeah, you know, like I said, I seen it done and I wanted to. It's hard to work with too. Yeah. It's really hard to work with. Yeah. Um, the paint itself. Oh, right on the paint itself. And not only the paint, you know, the polishing, it dries quick. You yeah. have to polish fast with the green. Yeah. And and do you think you'll ever attempt to do some small areas that where you can polish quickly? Of, of I do. Green? Mm -hmm. I do. I, I polish the greenware. I could polish the greenware. I polish the redware, and I polish the plainware, the original color plate. Uh huh. Property. And what cut when you fire the? Uh, the pots that, uh, without putting that red slip on, they come out a nice buff color, like the, like this one here where you they'll see the come inside. Out like a, they'll, they come out almost like similar to this, but a little lighter. To the black? Yeah. Oh, if you reduction fire. Yeah. And you only do reduction firing. I don't see any pots where you do red. The like this, like this red. I, I we rarely do it, huh? Yeah, we rarely we, do pottery. I, don't, I mean, red, red pottery, red pieces. You know, some yeah. people say, "Well, how come okay. you don't do a red turtle?" Or, you know, I, I think we just like the colors. Yeah, we'll do it once yeah. in a while. Yeah, once. Once in a, in a great, like great. When I, um, and so you just eliminate the the part where you put the manure on. Yeah. Uh huh. There's yeah. Only, so, there's only so like with the red pieces, we'll fire them up longer yeah. and then um, we don't add the horse manure but we have to take that that down quick because you don't want the smoke to get in if you get smoke in there it's, you'll get spots uh -huh. and basically the pot is messed up pot's messed up yeah cool. okay sammy the moment of reckoning okay how do you get the that <laughs> okay brown, rainy that I, brown edge oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Rainy tell was, us how you get that brown edge rainy was asking yes. so yes. what i'll do now you know, I add a metal sheet on the bottom of those, those box tin, but that day I couldn't. What I'll do is I'll add a metal sheet on the bottom of this box tin. When I'm done, the pieces that I want black, I'll take out. The ones I want red tops, what I'll do is I'll get tongs. I'll flip it over on that metal sheet. That metal sheet's red hot, that it burns the black off and turns it back to its original color. Uh -huh. So what I'm doing is burning off that black color. Oh, and because the metal sheet is so hot, hot. and it's effectively firing, refiring the up. pot, yeah. but it's not firing it in an oxygen, uh, I mean, excuse me, in a reduction atmosphere with the, yeah. um, with the manure on top of it. Yeah. So, so it's refiring that little part, uh, but it doesn't do that to the whole pot because that metal sheet doesn't stay hot enough and long enough yeah. uh, for it to heat up the whole pot to do that. Yeah, yeah. so Qu like... Question, if you have a pot that's been fired black and you decide that maybe you don't want it black anymore, can you fire it again and not use the manure and will it go back to that red color? Never tried it, but I, what I would think is it would be a orange, really orange color uh -huh. with like black marks, I would think. I've never done that. Um, and yeah. like, like with her turtles. Um, the plane? Mm -hmm. 
Like with her turtles, what we do is we have clay rings. We'll make clay snakes and clay rings. Uh -huh. And how we get hers is we'll, we'll lay the clay ring on the side and then we'll just flip it upside down on that clay ring. That clay ring is what holds it like that because if you put it like this, it's gonna turn. Uh -huh. So we, we do it like that. And so same with my, my bear paws, what I do is I have clay rings, I lay them on the clay ring. And then I leave them for about two to three minutes and then turn it. Uh -huh. And that's how I get the two colors on. That's after it comes out of the fire. After it comes out of fire, uh -huh. like how I turn my pots red. Yeah. Well, someone told me something else interesting uh, about how they get the uh, the red. They have no. They get black rings on their pots. They fire them with wood, and then he says he cuts donuts out of the uh, cow pies, uh -huh. <laughs> which is really funny. I can you imagine? Cutting up your cow pies yeah. into donut <laughs> forms. And then he puts that donut form the over the neck of the piece. So the bottom will be red. And so the bottom will be all red, and, and then the there's black. a black ring, and then the, the lip is red on the top. Well, on so. some sort of fire pottery, have you ever looked underneath where they sign it? Uh -huh. Some of the black pieces still have mm -hmm. red because some of them were actually touching the tin. Uh -huh. So it has that little little bit of um, tannish, reddish color mm -hmm. as well. Could, yeah. could you fire your pots upside down? Yeah, you can and, do that. And get so, sort of the same effect? Pretty much, yeah. You yeah. can do that. But it seems like you know how, how to control. control. Yeah, that's you know the thing is control controlling them. it, you know. And then it's just not the metal sheet that I use. There's something else, but I'm not saying what I put underneath my metal sheet. Uh -huh. yeah. That's when he has it on it, it just burns the black off and turns it back to its original and color. And so once it turns red, I had to borrow this pottery from my son. Um, Your son does nice work. Yeah. Yeah. It's and um, Justin and um, my dog ended up climbing our table because we work in our kitchen. Uh -huh. and, um, no studios. The studio... Uh, is the kitchen table. Yeah, in exactly. Cases, in okay. Almost every Everything, case. yeah. And so what happened was um, we left, and when we came back, uh, we have four chihuahuas. Yeah. And I don't know which one done it, but dropped my pot, oh. and it broke, and I didn't have nothing else. And so I ended up um, borrowing a pot from Justin, and so I ended up starting it. And so I can... Um, now show you how I etch. I mean, it's actually um, what I use to etch is a scribe. It's just a sharp object. But what I started off, I use this still yet. It's actually a sewing needle. It's a long sewing needle. I can get it out. Well, while you're looking for your sewing needle, I just want to remind people that, you know, we're going to be winding down fairly soon. And if you are interested in purchasing any of Sammy and Melanie's work, uh, now would be a good time to seriously think about it and then just give us a call. We, uh, we will still be here till 5 o'clock uh, this evening, and we are closed tomorrow. And, uh, you know, we have Amy and, and Erica and Denise in the back that will be more than, than ha happy to help you. And, um, you know, this demonstration and conversation and sale for... Uh, Sammy and Melanie is, you know, a, a great part of their annual income. So, uh, if you are interested in purchasing anything, uh, let me know. But Sammy, did you find the tool you were looking yeah. for? Yeah. So this it's is a what I sewing needle. I use a sewing needle to do all my etching, and uh, I I lucked out one one day, and I ended up finding um finding this long long sewing needle and that's all what this is huh. is a is a sewing needle that I use what I do is I put it into a contractor's pencil 
Um, you tr I try to get all my tools as comfortable as possible. Um, when I first started, I just got a wood, put a nail in it, and that's how I started. That was kind of uncomfortable. So what I did was I found another tool. This is a funny story. Um, I ended up um, driving into, our, into Espanola, and there was a guy selling tools. So I ended up finding a sharp object with a screw at the end. I didn't know what it was, and it looked like a pipe. And so I brought it home, and I started using it. And um, maybe about six months later, it's kind of heavy. Six months later, my brother comes over, and he tells me, hey, you know what that is? And I said, no. He goes, that's an embalming tool. And an embalming tool? Yeah. <laughs> Because it, no, it who would, how, how would you ever trust that guy? I mean, where in the world would he get embalming tools to be selling He was selling, selling tools, <laughs> like different types of tools on the side of the road. Oh, jeez. Oh, and, Sammy. And I didn't, I, to tell you the truth, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> and so it had a pointy end with a screw on this side. Uh -huh. It looked like a pipe. And so I guess that's where the tube goes. I did not know that. And he, he's, uh, my brother's older than I am. And so he goes, hey, man, you know what you got right there? And I said, nope. He goes, um, you got to embalm me too. I said, no, really? He goes, yeah, well, they put that in wherever they put it. And then they put the tube in, and that's how they suck out the blood. I did not know that. I mean. How how would you, you said your brother told you this? My brother. Now, how would he know that that I was an embalming have, tool? I have no idea, it to tell you the truth. It was weird, though. It was a weird-looking tool. Yeah, and so I don't know what ever happened to that tool, but yeah. And so, you know, you try everything. And so one day I came across a contractor's pencil, and I said, wow, let me try um, putting a sewing needle and find a sewing needle, see if it'll work. I tried it, and it worked. Yeah. But the only thing is I'm there sharpening, a, sharpening it a lot, you know. And... Um, I, I use it, but this one's dull. Um, I haven't got a chance to sharpen it, I forgot. But I use a scribe also. And <laughs> well, you know, over these past 15 uh, videos, we have seen some really uh, interesting tools that people have used to, uh, and how clever they are to put them in, but I think Sammy, yours just takes the cake. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was uh, weird. I mean, I know, didn't know that. A knife and a, and a broken cup and uh, for scraping and, and all those kinds of things uh, you pretty much find around the house, but I don't think there's Many people that, you know, if they go to that little junk drawer in the kitchen where they keep all that kind of stuff, they don't have any embalming tools no. in there. No, <laughs> no. So we also have an artist that uh, uses sharpened bicycle spokes to etch, to etch as well. Oh, wow. So maybe that thing would be able to hold a bicycle spoke. <laughs> um, who knows? But yeah, he uses it, and a then he grinds spoke. it on a grinder, yeah. and then sharpens it, and then uses it, and then grinds it. They're long and able to be used and oh, found wow. easily. Yeah, that's, hey, a, that's a good that's idea. That's a good that's idea. A good idea. Yeah, uh oh, spoke. those poor kids at Santa Clara who have bikes. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they don't leave them out at night for you, Sammy. Yep, exactly. <laughs> for etching, I stick, probably stick to the needle or the scribe. Yeah. Uh -huh. I um, I use a scribe uh -huh. when, I, when I'm etching. Yeah. You used to use the soil. What are scribes used for outside? Metal. Metal, I think. Oh, uh huh. Yeah. Like for, I mean, I know some of them use it for like welding and stuff. Okay. Yeah, and so all the work on on the pottery is done after it's fired. It's all scratched. Oh, so it. all of that fine etching that you do, it, yeah. you do after it's been fired? Yeah, I am. Um, wow. I um, used, when I first started, I was like in grade school. I was supposed to bring that pot. I still got one of my first pieces. Oh yeah, and from I, grade um, school? Yeah, that I did That was what, five years ago? Uh, 10. Yeah. 10, 10, <laughs> yeah. oh, okay, 10 years ago. Yeah, uh -huh. I, um, I um, 
I found that. I guess my mother put it away, and I found oh. it maybe. Moms do that sort of thing, don't they? Yeah, they and I was. Oh, yeah. I showed her. I was telling you, ah, this is one of my first pots. And what I did was I did a cub on there, but I put it in the desert, you know, not thinking. I mean, that's what it looks like, I guess. Uh -huh. and yeah, I used to do like a lot of animals. I used to do on my pottery a lot of dancers, um, mm -hmm. hummingbirds and roses. Um, yeah, I used to do that, but all of a sudden, you know, I, I turn, turned them in all into traditional, and I stuck with traditional designs, because to me, it only made sense. If I get an order, hey, I want a deer on my pot, can you put a deer, and I'll put, yeah, or a bear. I like to draw bears. Um, that's my favorite, um, but other than that, it's all traditional. Yeah. But yeah, I'll bring it in one of these days and oh, show good. it to Let's you. see some of that etching. Uh, before it's time for us to sign off. Well, I guess people can see that Native American pottery is so labor intensive, so labor intensive. And when you think about the fact that um, you look at the prices and people say, oh, they're really expensive. Well, you know, they're not stamped out by a machine. They're made all by hand from the uh, materials that are uh, available and collected and oh. processed, uh, the materials that exist on each one of the individual pueblos. And then time and time and time, you know, you need, you need, and you need to be a geologist, you need to be a chemist, you need to be an artist, you need to be someone who's willing to persevere. Uh, because it takes decades to really perfect your art and to uh, sort of um, perfect all the nuances as well and to be able to look at things and smell things and feel things and know exactly when everything is at its ultimate time uh, to process it so that you can wind up with a finished product that doesn't have broken legs or chips in the slip or uh, weird colors or uh, any of the other things that might not be as appealing. And on the top of that, you have to factor in that you are following in a long, long tradition uh, that your ancestors did forever and ever, and also that it is part of a religious experience for you as well. I mean, in my culture, we looked at the finished product and say, oh, look what I bought, look what I have, look what my grandson did, uh, and, and sort of um, put the value of the piece in the finished product. But with the Native American culture, the value is in the process of making it. And then once you do that, um, it makes it a little easier to be able to give it up because what Mother Nature has done for you is she's provided you with, with a, a way to earn the, the income that you need to go out and buy the things that you need. Uh, it's even in the old days, people traded their pots for the, the things that they needed. And the same thing is, true now, and I just love the idea of the burning horse manure smelling like money. <laughs> I think that's just great. So, Sammy, um, you, you're, you're holding it with a towel. Is, so, is that so your fingerprints aren't all over it? or No, it's no? like a... So it doesn't slip out of your hand? It's like a pad for my hand, and oh. it's holding it, and uh -huh. so, you know, I can fold it as much as I want. Cause see, like this is a vase, and so what I do is I'll hold it like that, and I just etch. Oh yes, I guess it is for just to hold it in, you know, my hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, is if if you're watching closely with what Sammy's doing. Uh, you can see how long it takes to do just a little part of that. And it's uh, easy to believe then that that big piece that he and Melanie did together took him more than 150 hours uh, to 
uh, etch in the design. And uh, really, really, truly remarkable. And if that's only one part of the process, just imagine the digging of the clay and the cleaning of the clay and the making of the pot and the polishing part of the pot and the firing and all the materials that you need for the firing. All of a sudden, these pieces become a real bargain. So we have a question from Charles, and Charles would like to uh, like to know if you use a blowtorch um, to make the sienna spots, like on your bear paws. No, like I said, we use the clay rings. I tried it, but it's more harder to use it. But I'm so used to of using the clay rings, and how how I said earlier, what we do is um, um, we'll fire. Have the clay when we fire, we have the clay rings on the side of the the pot. And what we'll do is when we're done firing, what I do is we just flip it over on that clay ring. And wherever and that, it's... And that clay ring's really hot? It's not the clay ring, it's the tin. The clay ring is just holding the pot. Oh, it's, the clay yeah. ring is sitting on the tin. Yeah. And the tin is red hot. Yeah, the tin and is on the bottom is red uh -huh. hot. So it's, that's the only thing that's really heating that up and turning it back. Well, yeah, so that's... You know, I've heard of people using blow torches. And um, the, the thing with the blowtorch is that you, have, you don't have a lot of control. No, and so you can, on a lot of the pieces you can tell because it's not even, the yeah. color ain't even. So once you put it down, you know, it's heating it up, heating it up all evenly. Uh -huh. And so you get a complete red, like all evenly, so. All the way around. Yeah, I yeah. tried it, but I yeah. didn't like it. And That's I've scary seen, too, because you know, you do all that hard work. Yeah. Bam! There goes your pot it cracks, or because of the, you know, from it being cold, or, or, you know, the heat hitting it automatically, you know, you can... Because the pot isn't hot enough to take the heat of the blood yeah. blowtorch. Yeah. 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 And right. what I've seen yes. with people who have used blowtorches is what they do is they do, like, sgraffito work where the brown color meets the black color, and if they do a band of graffiti work around it, it looks, you lose that fuzzy edge that you get from mm -hmm. the blue tor blow torch. Yeah. And so the top looks solid brown and the bottom looks solid black because where the two met, the, that has been cut away. So like, um, so like there's times too, like with her turtles, if I wanted a spot, mm -hmm. I could just, wherever I want them, I just leave them like that and it'll stay. That's how I get my little bear paws uh, with the little spots by uh -huh. it touching. Or you get two big ones like that. And so that burning manure isn't pulling the oxygen out of the clay because the other piece of pottery is in the way. Yeah, so it's like mm -hmm. touching. And so that's how we do that too. So we, we play around. Good, well I hope that answers that question. Well, you know, we're coming to the end of the line here, and um, I just want to remind everyone that uh, tomorrow we are, we have a day off, and Sunday we are, uh, excuse me, tomorrow's Sunday. Tomorrow we're closed. Monday we have a day to prepare for next week, and then we begin on Tuesday. And on Tuesday, we'll begin at 11 o'clock with Candelario Suazo from Santa Clara Pottery, who uh, also does etched pottery. And uh, it will be really interesting to see her different style. And then we'll go on during the week with uh, potters from Taos, Akama Zuni, and Akama again. And that will bring an end to this first series of 20 videos, demonstrations, and conversations with Pueblo Potters. We'll pick that up again, we hope, in a month or so. Uh, give us a little break and maybe uh, give a chance for the pandemic to die down in uh, um, Hopi and in uh, the Navajo Nation so that we can have some Hopi and and Navajo potters as well. But, you know, we have, we have a, a list of, of <coughs> potters who have called us and said, oh, it looks like fun, I want to do it too, I want to do it. And so uh, I think we will continue on with us putting together a whole library of um, videos of uh, 
watching potters do their intricate and varied work within the same process of making traditional Native American pottery. Uh, do we... Uh, oh, I, one of the things I think I would like to do before we end is to say to you, Sammy, and to you, Melanie, thank you. Thank you so much for keeping this tradition, tradition alive. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for sharing it with us. It was all very fun. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I was enjoyed doing exciting. it. I yeah. always, I always enjoy it. Um, this is what we like, you know. We, we like to demonstrate or teach. Uh -huh. and I've been doing it for 25 years, you know, yeah. and I have, you know, just, you know, the experience. And I'm glad you're doing this, not only for the people, you know, but yeah. this is awesome, Andrea. Today was pretty cool. Yeah, it was it, fun. Yeah, it it's was really, really fun. Really fun. And it was fun for me too because you know I really like your work and I'm always really glad to see you even though you show up ten minutes before the we before close, you close the door. <laughs> yeah, right before you close. Time. Always I mean, last minute. <laughs> see, I'm running up the street, you know, just in case we're not blocking the doors yeah. up. But we can depend on the fact that uh, Sammy we'll and Melanie will be here moments before, yep. before hey, we you're close. Right before you're even close. Yeah. Or every time I walk in, wow, that's weird. We were just talking about you. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking yeah. about you. Uh -huh. yeah, well, it must be 4.58, and Sammy uh, might show up today <laughs> still. Uh -huh. but, yeah. yeah, well, this has been really fun, you guys. And, yes. uh, I, and, and thank you for preparing so much ahead of time so that people could see what was going on. You brought a wealth of materials yes. uh, so that they were visible here and then lots of pieces no problem. And, yeah, in various stages of completion so that you know, we didn't well, have to sit see. here and watch the paint dry, so to speak. Uh, yeah, there, I mean, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> But, I mean, but at least you got to see, you know, the mistakes that we do come across yeah, and, uh -huh. you know, trying to figure things out because now, you know, there's no chipping or anything uh -huh. like that. You know, you, you just, you know, I, and I think natural. with the pandemic, I think we've all sat at home and literally watched the paint dry. Uh, but uh, this is... I uh, wish we could have done that, but we actually work. Sometimes we feel so guilty that um, when we're not really working... Well, we're not really working, you know, it, it, it feels like we're doing something wrong, you know. <laughs> we can only do a couple of days without actually going back to work. Yeah. Well, you know, it's your living. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's like playing hooky from work. Yeah. Uh -huh. There you go. And it just so happens that you don't have to commute very far. You know, you just have to get out of bed and go to the kitchen table yeah. and you're at work. And, uh, well, and of course, I mean, this is your livelihood. and. It depends upon it, and and you know if your kids want a new pair of fancy shoes, all those J words need uh, fancy shoes. They have shoes. girlfriends. Right. Let them get What's it that? now. They need Jordans. <laughs> yeah, they need Jordans. Right. <laughs> That's why they have their women now. They're out of the house. They're all out of the house. <laughs> we got the grandkids. We got three, three grandkids. Then. You have three grandkids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the beat two goes boys on. and one girl. And anybody interested in making pots? Our oldest grandson, huh? Yeah, he's, he's been, been picking up my turtles left and right. And breaking and, them. And breaking <laughs> them. <laughs> wow. Well, again, thank you so much for everything, and especially thank you for who you are. Yeah, you're this welcome. Was you're just, welcome. This, this was, was fun. just great. It was exciting. Yeah, it was exciting. Well, thank you guys so very, very much. We really